Every year, one thing is always predictable. Postage costs go up. Stamps.com gives you crazy discounts of up to 89% off USPS and UPS services, so your business will barely notice the change. Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses just like yours. It's like your own personal post office. No lines, no traffic, no waiting. Sign up with promo code PROGRAM for a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. That's Stamps.com code PROGRAM. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the men's room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off for Kicksville. Kicksville. <laughs> The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say, shake your radio more than three times and you're playing with it. You're listening to the men's room. And away we go. Welcome to season 19 and episode number 4035. Along with Steve the Thrill Hill, Three Chad Smith, Woo! and my cock. Montgomery! And you are the men's room. On tap today, it is a random question question. Your guess is as good as mine. Categories, the most friendly accents and cows. <laughs> we will play profile this. Plus headlines, the men's room shout of the day, fun with listener emails, and everyone's favorite, TV time with Tim. Like clack. Drinking and drunk. All right, here we go. A man parties for four days straight, not realizing that he had been shot in the head. Meanwhile, if it wasn't for an obedient dog, one Michigan man, lucky he's not dead. <laughs> California man goes to Planet Fitness, really wants to get his pump on. Fraternity brothers put a dead Longhorn Cal on a rival fraternity's front lawn. And to the UK, where new ambulances are more like Mini Coopers. That is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now, here's the question. Hola, bitches. Good day to you and yours. All right, look, most people, they try to do the right thing, whatever that thing might be. But that said, every once in a while, we just can't be bothered with being decent. So we try to cheat the system. Case in point, a woman in Florida, she tried to trick a urine test by using the pee from her aunt's dog. Now, she was so bad at it, she was caught before she even submitted it. Meanwhile, a guy in New Jersey, he was busted after passing fake bills at a convenience store. Not counterfeit bills. But fake ones. He used movie money, the bills that look real, but they actually say in fairly large letters for motion pictures only. So you're probably thinking, well, no wonder he was caught. Well, maybe. But keep in mind, dude had been using these bills at the same convenience store for four months. It took the staff that long to figure it out. But like we said, people try to cheat the system, and it's not even always a legal issue. Sometimes you just don't want other people to know what you're really up to. A restaurant recently got an amusing request in their delivery note section. It said, quote, knock quietly. I'm supposed to be on a diet. And in case you're wondering, the food order? Yeah, it was a nine-inch Texas barbecue pizza, a double chocolate ice cream with chocolate sauce, and a Dr. Pepper. But hey, <laughs> these things happen. <laughs> Clearly, this was a cheat meal. Or they're trying to gain weight. Who knows? But these are just some of the stories we saw. Stories that left us with many questions. Questions we'd like to ask you in the form of a random question question. And this is how it works. You call us and we will ask you a question at complete random. And after you share your story, we will share with you the news story that inspired said question. To be a part of the big show, the random question question. Call 206-803-ROCK. You can like the Men's Room on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Men's Room Live. And send your emails to the Men's Room at KISW.com. 
KISW. Oh, the Charles, away we go. Welcome to season 19, episode number 4035 of the large and in charge program we have for you today. Guaranteed future repeats. Oh, yeah. On this lovely Monday. Your guess is as good as mine on the way our categories today. We have the most friendly accents around the world. So if you're a traveler. Friendly accents. You go someplace, you say, man, that's uh, just the way they speak. They, they sound like a friendly group. Doesn't mean they're nice, they just sound friendly. Right. And these are obviously different uh, adaptations on languages. Sure, you know, sure. A lot of people speak English with a different accent mm -hmm. around the world and different places, depending on if you're in South Africa or you're in West Virginia. That's, that's the yeah. same language, Louisiana. People uh, speak differently. So we have the most friendly accents around the world, and we have a list of U.S. states with more cows than people. Than people. People. More cows people. than people. Than people, yes. All right, all right, all right. So uh, when you look at the population of the state, they have more cows <laughs> than people who live there. There are 10. There are 10 states with more cows than people. I guess a few off the top of my head, but I'll yeah, win. I'll yeah. win. Those are your categories coming up with your guess is as good as mine. And lucky you, you get more Men's Room Monday through Friday exclusively on Odyssey and the Odyssey app. Join us for the Men's Room app here. We'll go over the playoff picks from the yeah. weekend. We have some props coming up as well. Will somebody be able to catch the Ted Smith, who is leading uh, before uh, with two weekends to go in, uh, in the NFL season? So mm -hmm. Are we going to bet on the Pro Bowl as well? We can't. There's four games. Depends on how close miles is. Yeah. I'm getting a sense of that. Yes. Yeah. Maybe four games, maybe three games, depending on right. how you want to do the math. The Pro Bowl does count as an NFL football game anymore, or does it not? No. no. What about they the flag, flag football game. game? It never really counted. But, I mean, they're still, no. are they still putting on helmets? And, no, it's yeah. flag football now. It is flag football. It, it's, they do the, uh, uh, what do you call it, like the skills competition, All right. the strength competition, and then no. it ends with the flag football. And I think the Manning brothers, again, are the coaches this year. Am I losing my mind? Yes. Did, uh, did they not... S did they not make flag football an Olympic sport this year? I know the Olympics are coming up just in, uh, what, a week or so. I don't think so. I think they I think tried. There was talk Maybe. about seven on seven, but I don't, think it's I don't think it's in there. I don't I think, think so. we'd probably dominate that. You would hope so. I mean, I mean, it's, like, it's American we football. basically are the only country that plays it. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Also, join us for the Men's Room app. If you don't have the Odyssey app, download it now. It's absolutely free. Search for the Men's Room. You'll find all things. Uh, including the Men's Room Radio Station, where we got a chance to put together our own music channel, mm -hmm. podcast in one place, the weekly podcast, the daily podcast. If you haven't missed a show and you want to catch up, all things at the Odyssey app and on the uh, Men's Room page there. So we'll see you coming up at 6. And today is the day that we do our random question, question 206 803 uh, Miles, you're not too far. 2028. Oh, so flag like football will be part of the 2028 Olympic Games in LA. Really? Hmm. After it was, yeah, it was approved last October. Curious to see what country shows up, other than the U.S. I'm curious to see what country Canada silver medals in it. Maybe Mexico, know. possibly. I know they have teams in Germany. I, mean, yeah. I just think we'll kick their ass. Hello, Danny. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, hola, Danny. Welcome to the program. Ran a question. Question. You're kind of a derelict, Danny. Let's go with this one. Yep. How did you try to cheat the system, and did it work? How did you try to cheat the system? Oh, man. I can't really think of, uh, well, I don't know. The, the, the worst thing I ever did was I was I had a car that was, like, on the street, and they, the parking patrol kept hitting it for, like, you know, you have to here more than 72 hours, you got to move it. And I moved it, like, just to the opposite side of the street, thinking that would be fine. But apparently it has to leave the block, and it got towed. Mm, okay. All right. So it actually has to physically leave the block. I did not realize. I freaking didn't just move your car. That that's what they're asking you to do, right? No, it has to leave the block to stop people from just pushing their junk cars back and forth like that. They know what's up. Okay. That's stupid. All right. <laughs> well, Steve, didn't you have? Was it Tony that you said had? One it of was Tony. Had yeah. The back. parking meter cover. So yeah, like, so like if the parking meter was broke, they would put the cover over it. And this is it. when you still put coins in the parking meter, right? So, and, you know, it was, you know, every, what, nine feet as it used to be. So they would put like this kind of orange netting over it if the parking meter was not operational. And if you were lucky enough to get that parking spot, you know, you're good to go. You were fine. So it occurred to Tony, however, he's like, you know what? Because he got the parking spot and then he untied the orange thing they put over the meter and he threw it in his hatchback. And everywhere we drove. He, and he did. He never worried about witnesses, you know what I mean? He just got out of the car, opened the hatchback, pulled out this orange bag, which was the official thing that they used in the city, and he'd put it over whatever parking meter. He's like, I'm not paying for parking. That's why I stole the, the, the goddamn thing. But I, I do remember on one occasion, we pull up, and we're in front of a bus stop. And this is like 3.30 in the afternoon. It has really like 25 people deep. 
Tony gets out. He covers up the parking meter. Like, they started cheering for him. Yeah! Get him, brother! I'm like, bro, you saved like 50 cents. They're acting like you're Robin Hood. Mm -hmm. You know, my God. And uh, I mean, hey, if it worked. It's smart. It did work. And, I mean, he did it for like three years, man. But when they started converting like the credit card machines or there's one per block mm -hmm. that everyone pays for, he couldn't do it anymore. The other thing we used to do, this is bad. This is actually a federal crime. But uh, when we were in high school, everyone took the city bus to get to school. And I want to say bus fare at that point was a buck twenty-five, And the word got around and said, if you tear your dollar bill in half, because you had to fold it over anyway to fit it in the slot. Okay. To get on the bus. So they would tear their dollar bills and have and fold that half. Up. Basically, you got two rides for every one dollar. Hmm. So instead of losing. Interesting. So if your parents gave you like 10 bucks in ones, right, to catch the bus to and from school, you basically made five bucks a week. Okay. And that's what we did. Right. They would tear the dollar. And, but they started getting hip to that. And sometimes, like the bus driver kind of knew you may have done that, but they didn't have access to actually get into the box right, to right. look at it. Yep. So it was like, hey, man. You do. So when they started doing the, the machines they have now, we actually have to physically slide it in. Yeah, game was over. We used to kind of cheat the system at Maryland games because a guy I knew, he worked at the, the gates, right? Yeah. So his big rule was you just like, basically like you just needed a piece of paper or like cardboard. So we'd sit out in the parking lot. It would rip, rip up stuff so it was the same size as a paper ticket. And you still had tickets back then. Yeah. And you would just hand it to him and he would just kind of fake rip it and then mm -hmm. you'd go in. Oh, uh, they just let us walk in. They, uh, we tried yeah, that. Because uh, it was a cousin. Just like go to Cousin Joe's Gate, and you go with your dad, and you just walk in. We did it at a Ravens game years ago. You know, NFL, pretty strict security, but we realized we had our radio lanyards, so you kind of look official. And the Miles and I agreed. We said, look, man, just walk kind of fast and look angry. You look like you're part of all the stuff that mm -hmm. goes on, put an NFL broadcast. And it is amazing how much goes into it. You just wouldn't know. We didn't know until we actually got into the tunnel. At Raven Stadium. And when you, I mean, the catering, all these people, everyone's super busy. So we just acted like that. No one even gave us a second look. We had absolutely no business being there. And the final thing was you can see like daylight at the end of the tunnel where the players come out. And there's one security guard sitting right there. So we walk down and this guy looks at us and he's like, guys, I don't know who you fooled. I cannot let you out on the field. And he looks at Miles, okay? And he goes, wait a minute. Did you used to work at the Classic Rock Station, Miles? I was like, yeah. He's like, dude. I want was a journey, journey tickets. tickets yeah. I want journey tickets. Go ahead, guys. Here so here. as a result of Miles giving this guy journey tickets Take 10 journey. years ago, we got to walk oh on the NFL God. field. That was cool. Reason uh, we asked, how did you try to uh, cheat the system and did it work? Problem with drug screening, they say, is that you know if your sample is going to come back positive. There's not much you can do about it, depending wow. on the drug you've had and the time elapsed from the time that you did it to you uh, have to take the urinalysis. Unless you're a 42-year-old woman in Florida named Jessica Beatty who was caught trying to defraud a court-ordered drug screening by using pee that she somehow collected from her aunt's dog. Mm. Whoops. Now, it sounds like she was caught with a pee before submitting it. She then admitted that it was her aunt's dog's waste. She also provided a valid sample, which was not probably clean. I mean, what kind of person would try to submit dog pee if they weren't using drugs? But Don't you think they're going to figure out, like, well... There's no drugs in your system, but there's a lot of Alpo. Mm -hmm. Now, Jessica was charged with urine testing, fraudulent practices. Oh, and to be clear, her scheme would not have worked even if a probation officer didn't see the dog pee. Drug tests can easily differentiate human pee from non-human pee. That's the tough Yes. Thing. How did you get it? How did you get the sample? That is my question. I mean, do you follow the dog around? Maybe we need to take the dog out and, with, and hold a bowl under with, its... With a cup, you know. a thermos? Right. Because it's so sporadic when they finally do mm -hmm. do it. You know, I'll take my dog out, and he'll sniff some bushes and just walk by them. He'll sniff some trees and walk by them, and then all of a sudden just bam out of nowhere. Do you have a boy or a girl dog? Boy. See, I think it's easier with the female dogs. My dog, I don't know where she's going to be, sure, but when she squat. does, she does the squat. Which, by the way, again, for people that are driving by watching my dog squat to pee, it's pee, it's not poop. Mm -hmm. I, do, I get so many passive-aggressive people, right? They're driving up the road. The dog squats to pee. Pick up your dog to poop as they're driving by. I'm like, man. And I had one person tell me this in person as I walk about. You're not going to pick up your dog's poop? Said it's a girl dog. She peed. If you can there find it, I'll no pick it up. Poop. Yeah. I pick it up. That's how she squats when she pees. I'm telling you, man, every freaking day I get dirty looks. And I'm like, dog, you cause more damn trouble than it's worth. Mm -hmm. She's just peeing. It. It. It's fine. Got him. Random, random, random. Hello, Alex. Random, Welcome random, to the men's room. Random, random, <laughs> random, random. Hola. 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 Alex, welcome to the program. Ran a question, question. Okay. How are you guys doing today? We're doing, We're doing great, great, man. Thank you, brother. Uh, let's see. Hey. 
Uh, let's go with this one. What about you physically is a little bit different than others? <laughs> what about you physically? Oh, oh that's uh, quite easy. I could, uh, I could uh, um, voluntarily dislocate both of my shoulders. Does it hurt? Huh. All right. No, I've been able to do this pretty much since I was a toddler, possibly even younger. Have you ever attempted to get out of a straitjacket? Uh, no, I am not that flexible. All right, well, let me ask you this: If I had your, if I had my, if I arrested you and put your hands behind your back in cuffs, would you be able to pop your shoulders out, rotate your arms all the way over top of your head, and your hands would be in front of you? Uh, no, I, it, it's it's I, so so. What I do is just it's just uh, popping it out just to the on the side of it. That's really as far as I can go. Okay, all right, that's still farther than most. Does it hurt when you pop it back in? No, of course not. Okay. All right. Well, I just know that the times I've separated my shoulder, that was the problem. Uh, not necessarily the separation. That didn't hurt. Putting it back Putting in. Putting it back in. That hurt. Oh, it's like breaking the bone. <laughs> when broken yeah. bones, it doesn't really right. hurt. But when they set the bone, it's like this is When ridiculous. you get up, you look and you see after getting tackled or whatever, the, the, your shoulder is hanging down right. Right near your pectoral muscle. That did not hurt. It, maybe the hit hurt. But the, but it coming out, you, you weren't aware of it until you you knew something was wrong. But sure. you looked. But then it being popped back in. That's when you're just like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just from the top of your head to your toes is just it's a shock of pain. Alex, you ever just like pop your shoulders out to freak people out or do it as a bar trick? Uh, both, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm okay. saying because if you can do stuff like for whatever reason, it seems like if I go to the bar, whatever stupid human trick you can do, the bar yeah. seems to be the place to yeah, show For sure. Reason we asked about you is, uh, is uh, physically different than others. Uh, Steve, we know a person like this. Oh, no. A man with a distinctive waddle is wanted for robbing multiple banks so far in the new year. Distinctive. The advisory tweeted out by the Metro Denver Crime Stoppers calls the man the Penguin Bandit. Oh, yes, we do. While the (laughs) moniker given to the human is humorous, Denver police said he's wanted for robbing three banks in a week span earlier this month. Now, they do have some. They think he's between 35 and 45 years old. How do you not catch him? Say 5 feet 11. He's not going to outrun you. Maybe 6 feet tall, blue eyes, heavy build. But the dude waddles like a penguin. So they're like, look, you got to know this guy. Look at it. Basically, all the surveillance video is not of him at the counter demanding money. It's It's just him him walking. It's him walking in and out of the banks. Like, you got, you know, you know this guy. (laughs) Because he walks like the freaking penguin. Uh, the first location he robbed was uh, near the University of Denver, and then he robbed another uh, location uh, the next day. Police say that he was also casing another Canvas credit union. He was going to rob that one as well because they saw him waddling around the parking lot. <laughs> and uh, each of the robberies, police said uh, the Penguin uh, presented a demand note while also verbally demanding money. So they are still on the look for the Penguin Bandit in the, we do, uh, in the Denver area. We do know a person like that. You yeah, guys may yeah, have even yeah. seen this person. It is a woman, a little bit older. She works in the building. Maybe. And man, Asian I lady? Have. Yeah. I think I have. Yes, you would know if you, I mean, and it sounds bad. And I'm sure she's very nice. Her voice is really irritating. But I'm sure she's very nice. But every time we see her, we can't help it. We just start. Every time. Every time. It's, it's, we almost do it unconsciously. Our buddy VD just piped into my ears with the, with the penguin. He laugh. knows. Yep, he yeah. knows. Yeah, he knows. Yeah, he knows. Yeah, he knows. Random, random, yes. random, random, Miles, you mentioned uh, uh, you asked him if he could pop his shoulders out. Back, back to the caller. If he could pop his shoulders out uh, and get out of handcuffs. My buddy did that. Really? When I was in Scouts, there was one one time that we were, you know, we had our weekly meeting, whatever it was, and we brought it. We brought an officer, I forget what it was, but he was known to be able to. He could grab his hands behind his back and he could bring <sighs> them up all the way over the top. He's also a young kid, so they're you know they're yeah. flexible at that age. Mm-hmm. And he actually did. The cop was a little reluctant at first, but he's like, "All right, fine." So he actually put him in handcuffs, and he did just fold it up and over. It's like. Well, I've never seen that one before. <laughs> I yeah. think the coolest move you could do with that is if the cops aren't looking. Yes. You know, so they put you in the back of the car, your hands are behind your back. And by the time they pull up to the station, they're resting in front. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just as glad as still in the back of the car. Hey, we're still in the back. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, uh, congrats to this lady, but it can't be fun sleeping next to her when she's got a cold. A mom near Toronto named Lulu Lotus. Lulu Lotus. Lulu Lotus. Come on. Broke the world record for the loudest nose whistle, 44.1 <laughs> decibels. Yeah. Talk about a party trick. The loudest nose whistle. That's what she can do with her body. According to Guinness, that's as loud as uh, some bird calls. To break it, 
she needed specialized equipment that cost thousands of dollars. So she went to a place that specializes in precision sound recording. All right. It happened in 2022, but she recently found out it's official. Guinness just did a huge write-up on her. She can do it intentionally and even whistle songs. She's not totally sure how. But says it's something to do with controlling the muscles in her throat. Now, she realized she could do it when she was seven and has to have her mouth closed for it to work. So you, she used to prank her teachers all the time at school. To keep her mouth shut and whistle. she could do this without her mouth being open. Her five-year-old son just found out that he can do it, too. You gotta be kidding. She said it would be great if he broke her world record someday for nose whistling at 44.1 decibels. Is she single? Sounds hot. You have a uh, recording of I her nose whistle. I actually the audio. So I, Let's I, hear it. I don't think we have the actual world record of it because it's just it's just the sound of a whistle. But it is definitely powerful. And this, she actually changes notes. This is all with her nose. She even freaks out her dog with it. It's kind of impressive. Jeez, I whiz. It sounds stupid. I kind of wish I could do that. Yeah, I can't. If I, I mean, like, look, if I could just have my mouth shut and whistle, like, where is that coming from? See, she, she must be able to pinch her nostrils somehow. I, I guess. you have to purse your lips when you whistle, right? So would you have to purse, your, you know, pierce your... Have some control of the muscle, like, all the way up in there, maybe? Do you think she's an absent whistler, like, my father is and now my son is, where if they're doing something... He's just whistling out the top of his lungs. You don't even realize he's doing it. It's super annoying, but what are you going to do? <laughs> so I'm just wondering if nose whistler is the same thing. Well, the good thing about being a nose whistler, no one knows it's you. You can't yeah. see the movement in the cheeks and the jaw. You can't see the lips. No, so if you wanted to prank a teacher or disrupt the class or whatever. Ruin a funeral, a wedding. Mm-hmm. Oh. You, you know your, what I mean? I'm sitting on the plane. Everyone's annoyed that someone won't yeah. stop whistling. You got your nose whistling. And it away. sounds like it's you, but obviously it's, it's not because it's, your mouth is shut. It's an open casket funeral and, and, you're just and nobody's mouth is whistling. Right. And you're just looking around. I mean, I would definitely do it a lot more often if I could. I would do mm-hmm. it all. Of, I would do it on the bus. I would do it in restaurants. I mean, honestly, God, everywhere I, I go. I have a nose whistle, it. happy birthday. <laughs> Someone at the restaurant. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. table coming around. Whatever. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> More of the uh, random question question coming up. 206-803-ROCK. 99.9 KISW. The shenanigans continue. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. It is random question question. 206-803-ROCK. Hello, George. Welcome to the men's room. Random, random, random. Hello, bitches. Oh, Hola. yeah. George, welcome to the program. Random question question. Random, random, All right, let's see here. Random, random, okay. Random. George, how about this one? What was going on right under your nose that you did not know about, but you found out later? Uh, well, probably before I, uh, I got divorced last year, I had uh, no idea that uh, she had an affair with somebody that we were close with and wasn't disclosing it. So that was super fun to find out. Yeah, I bet not. How did you find out? Uh, later when she admitted to me after I kicked her out. Mm-hmm. So did you have suspicions or she just laid it on you? She just laid it on me. Okay, was it someone you worked with, she worked with, a personal friend? Uh, I was actually a person that she didn't introduce me to, like, the summer beforehand. And he was, like, a super nice guy. And then she was like, by the way, this has been happening too. And I was like, all right, cool, take your tea and shut the door. And were you, you said you were married? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that sucks. But I guess it's, you're better off now. That's a fact. Than have oh, somebody who's, better, better. you know, wanting to be with somebody else. Damn. I mean, it sounds stupid. At least she told you. Right. Yeah. You know? I found out, like, I had a... Uh, Is that better to tell him at that point, though? I, I, I always go back and forth. I'm like, I'm right. Like, I, I'm a big mm-hmm. fan of honesty. But, like, sure. at that point, like, is she just saying that to, like, twist the knife more? Not, like, passing my head a little bit, too, but... Yeah. No, I, I I asked the guy too, and he was like, "Yeah, that uh, that definitely didn't happen." Okay. Yeah, that's super special. Have fun. All right. Uh, well, this is this. I kind of got wind of this. I, w- I was younger. I was probably 18 years old, 19 years old. All right. I was working in radio, and there is the big boss, the general manager. Yeah. And uh, he's the guy who hired me. I, I knew his wife. I knew his children. They lived down the street from me. Okay. But uh, there was one woman who was the director of business at the time. Okay. Now, when everyone was gone, because I, I would work at night, and she would still be in there working. Now, this was a four-story building. But she would just sit up there and rip Salem cigarettes in her office all the time. 
Now you could smoke in bars. You, you, there were there were certain you could smoke in there was smoking sections in restaurants. But at that point in time, you weren't actually really allowed to just smoke in any general building. Right, not, not on the inside of a building. You could not do that. And I would always ask her, and I was like. You don't care that you're going to get busted? Like, the whole floor smells like smoke. I mean, I was a smoker then. I stepped outside to smoke. Sure. And she was like, oh, I don't care what he says. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, wow, that's, that's a pretty strong stance. This guy's a pretty powerful guy, and he, he's, he's your boss, and you don't give zero Fs about anything that you do, what time you come in. I don't care. Like, she'd have a bottle of wine out on her <laughs> desk, and I'm working late. I deserve a drink, that kind of a thing. But cigarette smoke is so distinctive. It is. Yeah, it is. And absolutely. This, it, this was... Uh, much like this office. So, you know, she had an office without a door. So the main area where everyone just smells cubicles like cubicles and everything, this whole floor. I mean, I, well, as soon as I got upstairs, because I go up there to get my time sheets, I go up there to yeah. look at my mailbox and see, like, what, what production I had to do and all these other things. And they're all located up there. So I go up there every time I came in to see what my schedule was going to be, all that stuff. And she just gave zero Fs. And I never, and I, I, I couldn't figure out why, A, they never told her to stop. Mm. B, it was never a problem. And then years later. And you pieced it together? It all came together. When She's I found, throwing some ass that way. When I found out, like, yeah. they were going on business trips and all that stuff. And I was like, oh. You know what, man? Okay. I, all right. I, I, I did not know, but I had no reason to know. But then it all kind of clicked in retrospect. I, I'm a smoker as well. And I'm working the overnights uh, back in Baltimore, early in my radio career. And... CBS Radio at the time, they kept sending out uh, emails, but only to the women that worked there that said, please stop smoking in a women's bathroom. It was about six months they would get this, and I'd hear all the women chit chatting about, like, who do you think it is? Da 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 da. Well, after half a year of this, my boss finally pulls me to the side and says, um, could I ask you something? I'm like, sure, man. <laughs> Are you the a-hole smoking in the women's room? I said, yeah. I mean, but here's the thing. You never asked. You right. never said. And he's like, you know we've been sending out the, these emails and memos and all these warnings. I'm like, right. But you guys were under the impression that it was a woman. He goes, because it's in the women's bathroom. I said, right. But I work overnight. There's no one else here. And if I smoke in the men's bathroom, that would be obvious. So, yes, I've been smoking in the women's bathroom for the last six months. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will stop. And the one yep. time I mentioned on the air, because we had a short song. And like Miles, you always say this, man, if you're a smoker, if you have a long song, cool, I'll go catch smoke. Short song sucks. Cher always had these short ass songs, and I hated her music anyway. And I would tell people, so man, here's what, the Shoop Shoop song from Cher, right? right. Like this thing's like two and a half minutes long, I'm a smoker, I got to out blow my smoke into the toaster. Right, and I said, this is like 3.30 in the morning, the hotline rings, mm -hmm. same boss, are you being serious about blowing smoke into the toaster? I was like, no, Bill... I'm just doing it for comedy. Sure, that was blowing my smoke in the toaster. Yeah, right? Absolutely yeah. was. Absolutely. absolutely. CDs. CDs. If you use a CD, most people put it in a CD, they listen to it, and they put it back in the case. Right. At a radio station, you're playing a lot of those CDs four to five to six times a day, depending on the album. Sure. So they get a lot of wear and tear. Smooth. And then you, you'll you discover on a smoke break that that song has a skip in it. And you walk in, <laughs> ding, 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 yeah. ding, ding, ding. You're like, oh, my God. Oh, my God, I had eight minutes. Ding, 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 ding. You're like, oh, man, I'm screwed. Hotline's ringing. Don't answer. Yeah. The reason that we asked what was going on right under your nose, here's a wild one. Scientists have mapped the largest coral reef deep in the ocean. This thing stretches hundreds of miles off of the U.S. Atlantic coast. They had no huh. idea it was there. Uh, they've known, basically, since the 60s that some coral was present in the Atlantic. But the reef size remained a mystery until new underwater mapping technology made it possible to construct 3D images of the ocean floor. This is the largest yet known deep coral reef. It's been right under our noses the entire time waiting to be discovered. The reef Damn. extends 310 miles from Florida to South Carolina. At some points, this coral reef is 68 miles wide. Jeez. 68. The total area is three times the size of Yellowstone National Park. How did we miss this? It is eye-opening. It's breathtaking in scale. Now, the reef was found at depths so that were about uh, from 700 feet to 3,200 feet. So sunlight doesn't penetrate, but unlike a tropical coral reef, that's all photosynthesis done by light, uh, this coral this far down filters food particles out of the water for energy. So they provide habitat for uh, sharks, swordfish, sea stars, octopus, shrimp, and many other kinds of fish. But they say the sonar mapping identified 83,900 individual coral mound peak Jesus. features in the Blake Plateau. For years, we thought it was just uninhabited sediment. 
But after more than 10 years of mapping and exploration, we have revealed the largest deep sea coral reef habitat found to date anywhere in the world. Three times the size of Yellowstone. That it just correct. seems crazy to me that we have, we just now found that. Mm -hmm. Just found it. I read, the, I read the story. I was like, what? Yeah, it just, it <laughs> How sound, did you, like, what? Right off the coast of Florida. Yeah. And it goes up to South Carolina, and it's three times the size of Yellowstone. And just now, like, oh, oh wait, wait a minute. you tell me like a su submarine can't turn We're good. on? Good, we found it. It doesn't have like headlights on that damn thing. You can't like look down and shine a light on it. Do subs have headlights? Well, I know the little ones do. You know, like you've, you've seen not the little teeny tiny ones. I'm talking about like a submarine submarine. Yeah, I mean, like you would think that they shine the lights down and just kind of like check out what's going on, right? I, I think they just work by like. So don't I know I don't, that. I don't, I don't think there's anything. I know, but like every I, once in a while, you, know, you want to flip the I if know. I, well, why, I, why do you have lights on it? So you can make so it So you can see things. If you don't look up the sound like you're looking yeah. at a doggone windshield, man. If I it's want, working on solar, want, you don't need lights. I want windows. I want lights. I want to be able to look out. I want turn signals on that bad boy. <laughs> I want turn <laughs> signals. <laughs> You know, but I mean, you're not looking I'm anywhere. I'm driving a thing. I want all the necessary. I still don't know that you'd be able to see anything. But I'm saying, like, the closer you get to the bottom, right? I just feel like you would have, like, a spotlight that pops mm -hmm. on. That's go, all. Oh, that's kind of interesting. It, but the flip side of that is, you know, if I'm in the Navy. <laughs> I mean, I've not seen this thing. And I realize there's a coral reef there. I wouldn't think to tell anyone because I would assume. Yeah. That they know. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm a pilot and I see a bird in the sky, I'm not going to mm -hmm. tell anyone because I would assume Look, I'm if not, you study birds, if you, you reckon. If so you, they probably think, like, of course they know this is here. It's three times the size of Yellowstone. They got to know, right? right? Even if you're going to go, like, the blue hole in, in Belize in a submarine for the very first time it's ever been done. I want lights on that damn thing. Yes. If there's a big old monster down I want to see what the hell's a Big old monster. You know, <laughs> whatever the hell's down there. you a big old monster yeah, in that blue you, hole. If you're a monster, wouldn't you live in a big hole? Well, yeah. Presumably. I would. Presumably. I'd yeah. live in a cave. You could, yeah. Like, you know, there's a few of those in what Star What is a Wars. cave but a big hole, Ted? Yeah, well, it doesn't go... It's it more of a gap. I'm thinking more of like a like a cave on the side of a mountain. I want to be a scary monster. But Every if you're really a scary monster, do you yeah. need to hide in a cave? Like, if I know that I'm a scary monster, right? I, I'm like Godzilla style. I'm not hiding anywhere. I'm just going to freak people out. Constantly. The more you're around people, the more chances they have of figuring out what it is to take you down, man. Have you seen guys? Alone? If you're a monster, right? you live in big holes. You live in volcano craters. You live in big holes. Right. That's what you do. It's always something. And he takes ah. off so that they can't sit there and study. I'm like, okay, here's his weak spot. No, Where did King Kong live? He lived on an island. He did not live in a hole, though. Right? Okay. He's on Skull Island. But he's on Dog on Island. But still. He was he was on, in a land full of other giant things, man. And guess where they live? And freaking holes. Mm -hmm. Random, holes. random, mm -hmm. random, random, random. But not King random, Kong. Random, yeah. Ain't scared of nobody. Random, random, Living a hole. Random, King Kong, goddammit. <laughs> Hello, Michael. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitches, and good Monday. Hola. Hola. Michael, welcome to the program. And the random question question. Okay, let's go back in time a little bit. We touched on this, uh, this discussion a little bit last week, but... Um, what what food would you say that you eat differently from most people? Oh, well. Like if I watched you have this combination or however you're prepared, whatever you're preparing, we're talking about the fact that uh, uh, the head chef had a list of foods that people do not cook the correct way. Intentionally. Oh, intentionally. Yeah, they, they, right. they, do, they do different things to their food. I talked about my daughter, how she chooses to eat pizza, which is still bizarre. And as my wife pointed out over the weekend, she goes, I had to stop watching your daughter eat a turkey sandwich. I said, she goes, it's just the same weird deconstruction process kind of thing. Yeah, she's like, I just, I just look away. And I go, look, man, it's just how she operates. I don't understand it. Huh. It is weird, but everything she eats. Does she, she do just, it like salad, too? Like take all the stuff away from the salad? She's got a no, pile of she'll lettuce. actually, if you give her a salad, it's one of the few things she will eat as it is constructed. But the pizza, it's pepperoni pizza. She eats the pepperoni first, then pulls all the cheese off, eats that. And for whatever reason, the slice of pizza is then turned upside down. And she eats it. I cannot explain Upside it. Upside down with just just the sauce so, on the bottom. Now. Just the sauce on the bottom. But somehow she holds it at a weird angle. So now the sauce is facing the plate. And she eats it with the crust side up. Does she watch other people the sauce eat the, the, the pizza? Apparently she's never seen anyone else on That's Earth eat say, pizza. Like, you you got to have pizza parties at that age. You, you have to see how all your friends eat it. it. That is how she eats it. Is she a plate turner too? She has to eat one thing at a time. She doesn't ever... Does she, she finish one part of the plate before she moves to another? A lot of times she does. Okay. But if you okay. give her three different things, right? They, they go in a very specific so way. So meat, cheese. So the meat first. Then the right. Then the, the cheese, crust. which you have pulled off. 
and not like one big handful. This is like four different, and this is one slice of pizza. And this entire process takes about 15 minutes. Okay. And it's very annoying because it's like, hey, man, if we go to like a watershed or something. Yeah. Everyone else has eaten a pizza. She's still on slice number one. Just taking her time. I oh, just, you got to take her for like Chicago deep dish just to throw her off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> Michael, she's lying, uh, right? She's like, uh. <laughs> so, Michael, what would you say you eat differently from most people? Um, if, if I had to actually think about it for what I might do differently, it would either be I eat pizza. So the way I eat pizza nine times out of ten is I'll actually take it to where like all the toppings. And I'll fold the crust in on itself, so it's kind of like a reverse taco. Okay, all right. Uh, that, that's fairly get common. All the flavor of everything, or, or another real one that I do quite often, minus my salad, is I almost put salt and pepper on just about everything because I don't really feel like some places give it enough flavor. Okay, what are some of the things you put salt and pepper on where other people think you're kind of insane for doing it? Um. I really just about anything. Watermelon the salad. I mean, you put salt on watermelon. Put a little salt on a watermelon and like that. Thing, give it a little bit that's, more of a tartiness. Yeah, you I like do too. That. I love it. That's, Ew, how, that's how I grew up eating it. Yeah, you got. It. Yeah, once I, you have it, you'll never go back. No way to do it at all. I learned that from my grandpa. He actually kind of he's the reason why I do the salt and pepper on everything. Okay. I think the old man he, he even does it on his salad. The only thing I don't ever see him do it on is like a corn dog. You know what? Honestly, my grandfather used to do it. I put pepper. I put black pepper on my pizza now. I I yep, started doing that. How yeah. about salt? How about salt in a draft beer? Yep. It you ever seen somebody salt? I mean, I see it because it makes it do fuzzy, it. but yeah. I'm not a big fan. Okay. Uh, yeah. Some people are chiming in there. It says I eat peanut butter, Miracle Whip, and cheese sandwiches. All right. I dip chips and crackers into peppered cottage cheese. Okay. Ran into somebody who's really fond of cottage cheese recently. Uh, I eat. Hey, David, the- we keep talking about cottage cheese. I'm gonna have to go buy some no, after work. It's terrible. No, just, and I bumped I love into it. a guy that we know. We're at the grocery stores yesterday, and I bumped into a dude that we know. And you know, he's typical. Hey, how you doing, man? Blah blah blah. Uh, he says, "Well, I'm I'm buying stuff for the football games." I'm like, "Right on." So I look into his uh, shopping cart. And there were four tubs of cottage cheese and an eight-pack of toilet paper. And I just thought, we enjoy mm-hmm. football differently. Uh, someone else says, I ate the bottom of a Snickers bar first, then the top. Kind of like corn on the cob. And this one is crazy to me. It says, I eat kiwis whole, skin and all. So I, 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 I eat the crust first on my pizza. I'm because to say, I li- you eat pizzas backwards. I do, because I like the sauce and the pepperoni uh, cheesy part the best. So I always like, it's like the last bite of anything. Yeah. I always try to make sure that the last bite of whatever I'm I'm having is the best part, I think, of the bite. I'm savoring it for whatever reason. I do that with sandwiches um, stay, very specifically. I, I do I can do it with sandwiches. With pizza, the first couple bites are the best. Yeah. And then generally, I try to save just a little bit of sauce and cheese to kind of for fold it back. Crust. Yeah. Crust. Yeah. So that way you get sauce with the crust. And I'm really I'm also... Team extra sauce. I'm also team ranch dressing for my uh, for my crust. If you got, yeah, if you got uh, ranch, marinara, I'll definitely anything. dip the crust. You know, like a garlic dip. Whatever. If you've got just basically, a, it's a breadstick. Any, anything yeah, else yeah. I can dip it in, I'm game. Whatever yeah. you have on the side, I'm good. I'll eat the crust of a Texas toast before I get to the to that delicious buttery center. Really? Yes. Okay. Because I do same, like some Texas same, toast. Same thing with Miles. Is like I I like that part the best, and so the crust isn't all that bad. You get a little bit of the of the center with it as well. But then you get that long run, and I have this one little bit of crust at the handle, basically. And then you get that long run of the innards. It's just fantastic. <laughs> Reason we ask what food do you eat differently from most people? Gene Simmons wanted to uh, ask a question for some of his followers on social media. What he wanted to know was whether he was the only person who liked to put ice cubes in their cereal. What? And uh, I've heard of the... I've it, seen it before. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the last posts that he put out before he left Twitter, well, currently known as X... Cereal for dinner was uh, something that he says he likes to do all the time, but as the photos show, Simmons was not only using ice to chill the milk in his bowl, his cereal of choice, Oreo O's. Uh, Some of Simmons' followers confessed that they, too, had adopted his cereal icing habit, while others said that they thought they might give it a go now that they knew it was a thing. Still, others reacted with shock, although much of this seemed uh, feigned. One person called the concept of ice and cereal crazy, while someone else suggested it was a billion times worse than Ozzy biting the head off a bat. <laughs> then we have an American tourist in Canada who posted a photo after they ordered a burger at a Toronto airport Hilton. They had to sign a waiver to get it cooked medium. What? The waitress took their order and brought the burger. Then she handed them a food waiver. 
that said they could not sue if the hamburger made them sick. It's not actually a new thing. Canada has laws in the books for years that say restaurants have to do burgers well done to kill off any possible E. coli. That's at least 160 degrees. Medium is typically 140 to 145. Mm -hmm. So the person who ordered it said they didn't even end up eating the burger. They took a few bites, but having to sign something that told them that it might kill them kind of ruined their appetite, they said. Yeah, it kind of does a little bit. A spokesman for Hilton says it's something they uh, do at specific hotels, but it's not a standard practice for Hiltons in the United States. But depending on where the location is and the laws, they, they try to uh, stick to them. I mean, they're right. At the time I order the food, it's not because of heat. It's not because I'm getting uh, blowfish or something. I'm like, hey, it's just a hamburger, but sign this waiver because it might kill you. I'm mm-hmm. going to pass. As far as people's weird eating habits, someone here says, you're making me rethink my whole life because my last bite of any sandwich is always the bottom corner piece, the worst piece. All right. Someone else says, I don't break apart my Kit Kats when eating them. That's a true rubble. That's a weird one. Bad. I do that with my that, string cheese. That's weird. It is a little weird. I don't know. It's not important to break them apart, but no, I just feel like no. you're supposed you're to. You're just having the whole candy bar. I, I, do, that, I do that with my string cheese. String cheese, dep- I, like I, I never say, pull it apart. Yeah. I just eat it's really a waste like of time. A stick. If I'm sitting at home just having a string cheese, I take the time to pull it apart. Really? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really, it's never occurred to me to do that. My kids told me I just me try to weird. make it last longer. Uh, someone else here says, I <laughs> eat Costco's chocolate and blueberry muffins. I'm like, what's yes. wrong with that? Frozen. Hmm. What? Okay. They eat the chocolate and blueberry muffins frozen. Uh, someone else there says, any hostess product. Ho-Ho's, Ding Dong's, Twinkies with a slice of American cheese. And someone else says, yogurt and cottage cheese is the bomb. Combined? That's what I'm guessing. Yogurt and cottage. Okay. All right. I like both, but not together. Yeah, exactly. That's... I like chocolate. I like tuna fish. They don't need to be together. Yeah. I definitely try the cottage cheese and the sour cream before the chocolate and the tuna fish. Yeah, I agree, yes. More of the right of question question coming up, 206-803-ROCK. Cyclists, get ready to shift gears. Newport, Oregon is calling you for an unforgettable ride along the stunning Pacific coast. Whether you're a casual rider or a mountain biking pro, Newport has the perfect trail for you. They've got it all. Scenic coastal roads, bike lanes, and rugged trails. Cruise along the Yaquina Bay waterfront or delve into their charming neighborhoods. There's something for everyone. Your adventure starts at discovernewport.com. That's discovernewport.com. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the men's room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. 99.9 KISW. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. It is a random question, question 206-803-ROCK. Uh, people are still pouring in the text about their weird eating things. It's a question you ask, like, what do you eat slightly different than other oh, people yeah. or whatever? Uh, and you were saying, what, in Canada, with the airport in Toronto? Oh, uh, the Hilton there. They basically have to, you have to sign a waiver. Probably, like, like, we were talking about eating contests. Right. If you're going to finish the burger, I bet you need to sign a waiver for a lot of those. But, you know, with that, you're going into it understanding that, that it's I'm a challenge. eat eight pounds sure. of food or it's super yeah. This is like, dude, I I just... Well, you're rolling the dice. Hamburger. You're rolling the dice yeah. with E. coli. Well, somebody here says... I, used I to- Like, I always bring this up, but, like, to me, having your... That was only for steaks. It's, like it's only the last 15, 20 years where they're like, how do you want your burger cooked? I was like, I don't know, it's ground beef. That's all right. Usually a burger just shows up it's well done, burger, right? Yeah. Uh, somebody here says, I used to work at Wendy's. We had a regular that would order his hamburger patty cooked 15 seconds on each side. That was it. Hmm. That was it. Uh, wow. And as far as people's eating out, put Tabasco on my popcorn. That actually does not sound crazy other than getting soggy. Somebody here says, cottage cheese and pineapples or cottage cheese and olives. This person I'm going to beat if I meet them. Peanut butter and tuna sandwiches. Ooh. I just, ooh. And then somebody says, kind of along the lines of ice in your cereal, little chunks of vanilla ice cream with cinnamon toast crunch is about as good ooh. as it gets. But no one since I was 13, a uh, stoner kid in the 80s. You know, I did that once. I tried a bowl of vanilla ice cream, crushed up some cinnamon toast crunch, and it was delicious. Yes. It was just more than my mouth wanted at one time, if you know what I'm saying. No! No, I don't. I, it's t- it was just tough to eat, man. It was very, very good. I mean, yeah, just... it's going to cut the roof of your mouth, but you fight through that pain. I did. I did, man. It is. It is. It's a good combination. Hello, Tyrone. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitch. Hola. Hola. Tyrone, welcome random, to the program. Random, random question, random, question. Random, 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 All right, since we are talking food, random, 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 what would you say is the one meal random, 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 that you will never be able to give up? Mm-hmm. The one meal you can never give up. 
Oh, man. Uh, ooh, 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 I'd say a good steak, man. Whatever comes along with that steak. Well, that's one of those that they tell you. If you've got... Uh, you What's know, that? Well, if you have cholesterol issues, high blood pressure. Oh, right, right, right. As far as... Cut out, the oh, yeah, cut out the red meat. Well, or... man, that's okay. Okay. Would that be your last meal? You know what I mean? We're about to execute you. You get your last meal. You're ordering a steak with all the uh, fixings. You got that right. What, hey, uh, what kind? Oh, i say a tomahawk, man. That's where it's at. You're going to go. Oh, wow. Hell, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, nice. well, it's your last meal. Why not? And, uh, how do you want it cooked? Uh, rare. Not Damn. blue, man. Blue's too much. But right. Rare's good. Okay. That's a that's a big ass steak to cook rare. I don't know if I could get through one of those on my own. If I, mean, I was going to the chair, I I'd take my time and get through it, brother. I, I understand. That, that. that is yes. a good point. Yes, yes. I, mean, I think we all would. Just, you don't have to worry about. Oh, it. Every time I've ordered it at a restaurant, it's been like a group, of, like two or three people. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, for, for sure. sure. And I don't. I mean, I'm sure they'd give that to you if you ordered it on your own, but that'd be pretty ridiculous. I think they'd probably try to talk you out of it. Yeah. Explaining, do you understand how big this is? And if you're like, I absolutely do, bring me the tomahawk. I think a seafood allergy would absolutely wreck me. That would be horrible. Uh, but but just on basic food, nothing pricey or expensive. Just a Big Mac. I think if McDonald's got rid of the Big Mac, I'd lose my damn mind. I love a Big Mac. A Big Mac. Yeah. A Big Mac. All the foods I, I, in the world. I, I think if they got rid of their chicken nuggets, people would lose it. Because if you like their chicken nuggets, nothing, nothing else, else like, like them. They're unique. They are their nuggets. And their French fries. All of it. You I know just, what I couldn't give up, man? Peanut butter and jelly. Like, that is my go-to all the time. If I get stoned, if I'm not stoned, if I just Cinnamon, want to snack. Cinnamon, toast, crunch, probably couldn't give that up. I So, I went to the grocery store yesterday. Even though you're already lactose intolerant? Doesn't matter. It, it's worth it, man. It is worth the stomach pain to eat a delicious bowl of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. If I had to give it up, I could give up Cinnamon Toast Crunch before I give up peanut butter and jelly. Mm-hmm. I would not yeah. be happy about it. I mean, that's just a tough question. Is it like Chicken wings. You, chicken wings would be tough. Tacos. I, there's a yeah. lot of stuff that would be tough, but I think about it in the sense pizza. of, like... Pizza would be hard. I make peanut butter and jelly at home. I can eat it any time I want. I can bring it into work if I so choose. So while, like, wings and pizza, both of which I had last night, uh, would suck to give up, I got to order it. Okay. I'm not really right. making the home... You know what I mean? Yep. Reason we asked, what is the one food that you would never get up? When you order uh, food delivery now, you can usually customize the drop-off, like uh, uh, contactless uh, deliveries that were used during the pandemic. Don't want to touch anybody or, or see anybody. A restaurant in the U.K. recently got an amusing request. In the delivery note section, it said, not quietly, I'm supposed to be on a diet. <laughs> Whatever the diet was, this was definitely a cheat meal. The order was for a 9-inch Texas barbecue-style pizza. Now, those are delicious. Uh, I'm assuming Texas, that, that must you, be that must be beef instead of chicken. That's yeah. If it's Texas barbecue, mm-hmm. I'm ne- yeah. I've, honestly, I've never heard of a Texas style barbecue pizza. But I would eat that in a heartbeat. Yeah, great. Right. Usually, it's like ground, chicken maybe, barbecue. Yeah. pizza. ground beef with barbecue. I don't know. I, I don't, don't think they're doing ground beef, man. I bet. You well, this was in the U- this was in, this is in the UK. So uh, and they're not uh, really uh, cooking. All right, right that man. makes and a little more sense. The best. I'm going to Google this thing and see if I can see what what that is. A double chocolate ice cream waffle. With chocolate sauce <laughs> and accompanying that with a Dr. Pepper. So this is a very serious Texas meal if you're going to get a Dr. Pepper with uh, the Texas barbecue-style pizza. The restaurant a, uh, posted a photo of the receipt and said they made sure the driver honored the request because they didn't want to betray the customer's trust, like how the customer was betraying their diet. Yeah, it's fairly. Like, hey, man, I don't care. What's the name of the place, Miles? It doesn't say the name of the place, but it says the name of the pizza is a Texas barbecue-style pizza. Okay. So I mean, Domino's fun. has one. Bar- uh, Texas style? Yeah, looking at it right now. What uh, What's on it? Base of tangy, sticky barbecue sauce, and then smoky bacon, succulent chicken, bunch of red onions and green and red peppers. Yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. Doesn't sound bad. I feel random, like it should be random, 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 Speaking of random, Texas, random, someone here says, Texan random, here. Random, I lived on banana random, and mayonnaise random, sandwiches. Random, Ooh. Random, Bananas and mayonnaise, man? Wow. No, I, I love both, but that is a strange combo. No, not in Texas. Hello, Taylor. Welcome to the men's room. Boo, bitches. Boo. Boo. Taylor, welcome to the program. Ran a question, question. All right, let's go with this one. What uh, What are you allergic to? Oh, let me think. Um, well, I tell my wife I'm allergic to her cats uh, <laughs> just because they suck. Uh, but honestly, I... I don't think I'm allergic to anything. Now, wait, did she have these cats before you guys got together, or did they, they join your household after you're married? Bert and Ernie came with <laughs> the wife. And how long have you known the cats? Uh, 
I I think like four years. We're married now, so I can't like get rid of them. And <laughs> well, like, I'm just saying, like, it seems like after time that you guys would kind of get used to each other, and the the relationship hopefully would improve. It, but cats, well, that, if so, they don't like you, they're just always not going to. What? Why do these cats suck? What? What's Bert and Ernie's problem? So Ernie, he's a Maine Coon. He's like gigantic, and he likes to sleep between my legs at night, which he turns into pure cement. <laughs> and I, I only get you know seven inches of bed at night, so it, it's hard to sleep. And then Bert, because. I, I don't know. I guess someone just cornered him in a locker room when he was younger. He's, like, afraid of, like, if I have my hood on or if I'm wearing boots or I, uh, I don't know, breathe. He just hisses constantly. Hmm. But really? It, it, well, does Bert, does Bert uh, is he close to your wife? Oh, they're both super close to her. Like, uh, they love her, and they love me, but... Are you sure? Also, given... I give them the middle finger as, as every time I can. Step parents, <laughs> step parents, okay. whether you're a human or an animal, can 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 go the can go one way or the other. You, you never know. Some some dogs will love you. Some dogs can't stand you because they get jealous because you're spending time with with a person that they uh, you, you know consider their parent. So it just well, depends on the situation. I I always I was raised a dog person. My my mom fosters bulldogs. Um, I was the one that called in with the three giant dogs that killed the cougar. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I remember so, that. I've always had dogs, and then now she told me, she's like, no, the cats won't like dogs. You can't have one. I'm like, oh, cool. She's like, but the cats, you'll get used to them. There's some about, like, you come home, and there's a dog there, and they're like, hey, to give you licks. But cats, they're like, please go away from me. And, oh, I hate it. My daughter legitimately did have an allergic reaction to cats uh, when she was born. I, she doesn't have it anymore, but she did then, and it was like severe asthma. So when do more people have aller uh, allergies to uh, cats than dogs? I don't know. I, I, just the hair? Or the dam, hair? maybe? Or something? I can tell you this. When, when I'm, uh, it's also a lot of people are probably just like, yeah, I'm allergic to them. When I got together they with don't uh, like, oh, a guy just called here, yeah. I'm allergic to them. When I got together with my wife, she had two beagles. Right. And it was tough being a step-parent of those beagles because they did not want me around at all. They of course like, not. I was ruining their whole life. So when the oldest passed away, we got a newer, uh, a new dog, Chewy. Another beagle. Another beagle. And I oh. thought, okay, well, you know what? This is going to be my opportunity to start from scratch here, at least with one of these dogs and not, you know, yeah, yeah. Miles would leer at me like he's going to kill me. Miles the dog. He looked at me like he wanted me murdered. He did. Yes. And, you know, so when the other dog came around, I was like, okay, well, this is a fresh start for me. Well, that, I think Miles gave, uh, gave Chewy like a uh, tutorial, like, you got to hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, he just kind of like led him astray. But either way, it was, uh, yeah. Uh, Reason me ask, what are you allergic to? They say, do you suffer from allergies? Are you willing to strap a comically large device to your face to maybe help deal with it? If so, good news. A new gadget called Nasocom yeah. just hit Kickstarter. What is Nasocom? What is Nasocom? You strap it to your face for 15 minutes a day, and it's supposed to make your allergies a lot better. How does it work? All right. It electrocutes your nose. Oh, cool. Cool. It's cool. got six electrodes, three for each nostril, that deliver small electric shocks to stimulate the muscles in your nose. They claim making your nose muscles contract and relax can help you clear your sinuses and let you breathe easier. It's small enough to take with you, so you can use it anywhere. The video shows a guy using it at his desk at work. Downside is, pretty bulky on your face. So you will be the weird one at the office for sure. Oh, my God. Yeah. They plan to sell for 100 bucks, but you can get it for 60 bucks if you back them on Kickstarter. They claim it'll ship by March just in time for allergy season. I'm looking so, at a picture of it now. And when you're wearing it, it looks like an Oculus, but it's over your nose instead yeah. of your eyes. I don't know how I feel about that. Look well, at those look, electrodes. You allergies, bag. people will do it. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, sometimes allergies are so bad, I'd strap that thing on. Yeah. Random, I know you random, and my wife. Random, man, people wear CPAPs, random, and they sleep in them for seven, eight hours a night just but so they can breathe. at least they're in their random, own bed. Random, you know, yeah, yeah, I suppose no, walk no, around no, the no, corner no, and you got to, yeah. But, Ted, I know you and my wife basically cycle on allergies at the exact same time. Yeah. Like when spring hit, you too, I'm talking like the day that one of you starts getting the allergies, I know the other one does. Allergies suck. Yeah, you guys get them bad. Though. Yeah, I never had them until I moved here. Really? No. Well, allergies you get as you get older. You're not, like, some things, like a food allergy you're sure. probably born with, but seasonal allergies, I found out, they develop over time or if you move, live in different environments and stuff. So, so like, when you have, when you see people sneezing, 
and they're like in their 40s or 50s, and they're like, I don't have allergies. It's like, you probably do. You do now. You need to go check that. So what right. happens when you, say, fly back to the East Coast, right? Same time of year that you start getting allergies here. Do you still get allergies there, or does it ease now? Up? Really? Yeah. So it's just something in the Pacific Northwest. Yep. The okay. environment. The environment hates you, Ted. Just Hello. This one. <laughs> just this one. Hello, Justin. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 Justin, welcome to the program. Random question, question. Let's see. What do we have here for you? Uh, let's go with this one. Okay. Let's say that they're going to make a movie about your life. Who would you like to play you in a movie that's based on your life? Huh. A really good looking dude. Okay. Well, All have you right. been told you look like anybody? Uh, not really. You just want someone good looking. All right, play. give us a general description. What what color is your hair? How long is it, etc.? Um, I I've been told okay, I've been told I look like uh Jax from Aunt Sons of Anarchy. Uh, Who's you guys talked to him? Uh, Ch- uh uh what is his name? Chad Charlie Hunnam. Charlie Hunnam. That's a very good looking man. That does not help me. Are you a, What does Charlie Hunnam look like? Have we got a picture of Charlie Hunnam? Do you do well with the ladies? I have a beautiful girlfriend, yes. Okay, all right, well, very all good. Right, so you go. must be somewhat attractive. He's been in movies. I mean, he's probably most famous here in the States. Oh, for, that for dude. That. Yeah, yeah, I know that guy. Okay, is. all right, that's not, yeah. Yeah, you're all right looking, dude. Well, maybe that's the guy that should play you, then, if you have a movie based on your life. I take it, I okay. take it. All right. Who, who would you pick for you? Oh, God. Uh, More accurately, who would we pick for Miles? Well, look, it's, it's I would a, have uh, done, like, Matthew Modine, except he's, he's too old now because his hair's all gray. That's yeah, and someone's going to play a younger version of you. So, like when they bring in the, you know, that's the tougher part. Right, but the, the, the person yeah. now that could take that place of what you kind of look like as a kid. I'd take the kid from uh, Black Wonder Years because <laughs> he had the same little fro I did. It takes place, you know, a couple years before I was born, but still, I'd be like, all right, dude, you, you basically have to. Live it was that. not called the Black Wonder Years. What the hell is it called? I'm trying the to Wonder Years. It's just a reboot. Oh, yeah. oh it's a reboot. Oh, 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 but there's the Wonder Years. Oh, okay. There's Fred right. Savage. He was Fred Savage, right? The what? Yeah, Wonder Years. Okay. And then there was the remake, which is a black family. Well, there was another so black the, like, Wonder Years. Yeah, but there was like a Jewish show like that. There was a there was a where there's a narrator and he's kind of guiding you through. The story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Explaining what's going remember, on in their life. Goldbergs? Goldbergs, Goldbergs. Yeah. yeah. And then there was the black equivalent to that, which was you had blackish, you had blackish, the Goldbergs, blackish, blackish. blackish. Yeah. That was the show I was trying to think of. Okay. So the reason we asked, who would you want to play you in a movie? one with all the black people. Well, yeah. They got the Jewish people, they got the black What's people, then they got the white family. It's right there in the name. Yeah, yeah. 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 The Goldberg. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> Converse. It all up. Black-ish. blackish. I think you, you right. kind of know what you're getting yeah, into. Exactly. Blackish. <laughs> blackish. Yeah. The reason we asked, who would you want to play you in a movie? Pauly Shore says he's really excited about playing Richard Simmons in his life. I the can world see that. In an upcoming biopic. Now, depending on the person is, or, or who they are, and what they're known for, when you found out the person that's going to play you, a lot of people probably, not that there's anything wrong with Polly Shore. I, I, I'm not saying that. But if someone says, Yes, like, you are. Polly Shore you're kind wants, of saying that. I am saying that. It's basically yeah, exactly what you're yeah. saying. The reason this thought is in your head is because yeah. the idea to you that Polly Shore is going to like play you right. like, kind of pisses you off. It's kind of like if someone said, Okay, Sam Kinison's going to play you in your biopic. You're like, Sam Kinison, why don't I scream? And I'll go, Ah. You know, I don't have a okay. Just the looks. Yeah, balding mullet. I mean, why, why in the hell are you? Why are you picking Sam? I can see Paul Shore kind of. I think what's even worse for Polly Shore is that on some level, you kind of look like Richard Simmons. I mean, this yeah, isn't yeah, cool yeah. for anyone involved. Like Miles, if they came to you and said, "Hey, man, we know that uh, you're not an actor, but we're offering you five million dollars for this role. It's Rowan a biopic," Atkinson. and you say, "Cool, man. Uh, who am I playing?" <laughs> it's the life and times of Clint Howard. Like sure. you're going to be pissed. Mm-hmm. A uh, comedian has been lined up to play the uh, fitness guru in a film being developed by Warner Brothers. Uh, the organization founder and uh, president of uh, the Warner Brothers organization says, there's an amazing, dramatic, and uplifting story to tell you about Richard Simmons. He says the idea has been in the works for years, but it didn't come together until a few months ago when he saw press about Polly Shore being touted by social media as the only person that could play Richard. They were just putting up side-by-side pictures and going like, look, they okay. ever do, they ever do a, a biopic of Richard Simmons. Look how much Polly Shore looks like him in these two pictures. That kind of does. So we all need this biopic, uh, he says, now more than ever. Simmons represented mental health, getting people in shape, and being his authentic, silly self. Uh, whenever he was on lie. TV. Yeah. He is. He just, I don't know if he's sick or whatever. He just really doesn't go out in public much mm-hmm. anymore. Okay. All right. Uh, he was on TV. You could never take your eyes off of him, and he brought such joy to his appearances that represented nothing but a good time and positivity. 
Shore already plays Simmons in The Court Gesture, which is a short film that will be released during the Sundance Film Festival. Uh, either way, Richard Simmons now has made a rare public statement to confirm that he's not involved with the upcoming biopic starring Pauly Shore. I have never given my permission for this movie, so don't believe everything you read. I no longer have a manager. I no longer have a, a publicist. I just try to live a quiet life and be peaceful. While we would love to have him involved, according to Warner, we respect his desire to uh, privacy and plan to produce a movie that honors him, celebrates him, and tells his dramatic story. From what we understand today in a story, uh, Richard Simmons did, in fact, reach out to Polly Shore. Oh, really? Basically tell him, hey. Yeah, I was going to say, that's what's funny. That. There's like two articles in TV time. One's like, Richard Simmons doesn't approve of it. The other one's Polly Shore. is like, ah, he reached out to me. Yeah. Oh, that's good. But I mean, the other thing, too, is like, it's not a hit job. Exactly. Like, Polly Shore is doing that movie to... Show like the other side, the good side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he encouraged people to work out. Uh, no body shaming was involved. Yeah, he doesn't strike me as a guy who made a lot know, of enemies. Like, look, when you watch fitness shows, it didn't it, if it was like Jane Fonda workout videos initially when this whole craze kind of took over the television or the guys that sold, you know, the Tony Littles of the world. Yeah. Like, all these fitness dudes were selling you either products or. Uh, hell, remember the the girls who used to work out on the beach in Hawaii on ESPN in the morning? Yeah. Yeah, we remember You worked them. on the little black uh, circles yes, in the sand and all yes, that stuff? Yes, yes, That's much different than Richard Simmons <laughs> encouraging just anybody to be able to yeah. stretch out, go to the gym, uh, get any kind of exercise you can, whether it was walking, dancing, and all those different things. Just sweating to the oldies, Mike. Was he sweating sweat? to the oldies? I believe he Correct. was, yeah. Okay, the sweating to the oldies. Did they have another Not thing? Everyone looks like Suzanne Summers when they're working their thighs out, but he was more approachable. He was the guy that you know, related yeah. to the common person. Because he was not a good looking man. He was not dressed particularly well. He did he not did have, have muscles. Right, there was he's, nothing he's about him. Not really. <laughs> He, he just wanted just, you to be healthy. He was positive. He was energetic, yeah. and you know, and, and people loved him for it. Well, I mean, look, even if you're not in great shape, like you're not, you're not going to feel worse for Exercise. doing a sweat into the oldies, no, or going for a walk. I mean, you might not see results right away, but I think that was kind of his point: is just stay active. You know, the problem is I'm old enough now to sweat into the oldies. It's my playlist, man. <laughs> it's my Spotify. What are you talking about? Well, even some people too. Like, look, I I see it in my mother all the time. She's fine. Her health is fine, but you know, she just gets old, and I'm like, y you need to. Stay walking. Stay no. walking. Stay yeah, up like there, You're, you're going to be 80. you got to stay active. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More of the random questions. Two question. lemon drops. Coming up, 206-803-ROCK. 99.9 KISW. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Your guess is as good as mine. Coming up our categories today, we have the most friendly accents around the world. And we have uh, the states with more people than cows, and we just... How oh, do we get our phone lines back now? Kind of. If yeah. you're on hold, call back 206-803-ROCK. Kind of a little shenanigans going on here with the photo lines today, but we'll, uh -huh. we'll figure it out. Okay. Let's see here. What do you got? Mm. Okay, I'll give you guys one. Random, 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 random. random, random what random, did you or someone else get away random, with longer than expected? Random, random, random. Uh, not showing up at school. How long was that? Uh, I, again, in my junior year, I missed 120 of 180 days. Okay. And for the most part, nobody noticed. The bad thing was when they did notice, uh, there was a heap of trouble. Oh, okay. My That's a lot of days. That My parents expressed that to me. You know, when they're, they were so blown away by the magnitude of how many days I'd missed. You know, my father thought it's going to be like, he skipped a couple of days here and there. Like, 120 days. What in the... They lost it. As I would, too, as a parent now, looking back. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was a smooth operation forever, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole junior year. I think. Did uh, you go at all and like just dip out after like homeroom, or did you just not go? I just didn't go. I would start right. dipping out over homeroom, and then kind of like, why? Why am I even doing this? Why mm -hmm. even bother to go to the school? Again, in retrospect, not a role model. Clearly, I was very stupid, but at the time, like, yeah, I'm just not going. Okay, I've definitely I did that once in high school. Just said something that was due on a Monday. <laughs> Turned it in. Did not do it over the weekend. And, you know, like my mom dropped me off at the same thing, kind of waved, walked in the door, and just turned around and walked out. Yeah, just wait for the car to disappear, and... and it was go. right. It was like a first period class. So I was like, all right. I, honestly, I was like, I'm just going to walk to McDonald's. I just walked to mm -hmm. McDonald's, ate breakfast, and then went in late. And, and, and also, as I brought up earlier, I uh, got away with smoking indoors at the old radio station for six months. Because I was smoking in the women's bathroom, and they, they thought yeah, it was the yeah, ladies. Yeah. But, yeah, they finally the pieced together the, 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 that it was me. The one that I got away with... Uh, was not done by me, but it was something that I benefited from. There was, uh, I lived in this old house, 
had a bunch of roommates in there. I've told you about this place before. It was just, a, the door was always open, closed. Right. Somebody's always coming in there, swinging in and out. But they had two apartments that were downstairs. Now, we had a communal basement that had a paid washer and dryer in it. It was also where all the hot water heaters were, all okay. the things for the individual apartments. Also, where the cable came into the home. Uh-huh. Now, um, unbeknownst to us, which we should have done on First Hill at our old apartment that burned down, just plug the television in the wall first. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. To see what happens. Oh, yeah. So, we plugged the television into the cable, and the cable the, the cable worked. Mm-hmm. So, okay, that's great, but we only got a certain set amount of channels. What you needed was the cable box. Correct. All right. Then we found... We didn't even try it. That guy I showed know up. That. I yeah, know. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. Always just plug your cable in as soon as you move in. Yeah, we had to pay for him to be there, but he's like, dude, you I know. He was like, you really... I, I should yeah, like, just, can, I think we said, can you leave? Right. <laughs> right. Just to see if it worked. So we did that, and then had another buddy whose uh, roommate basically just bolted on him. I don't know if he got kicked out of school, whatever right. the deal was, but everything in that home was in his name, from the cable to the electric bill, the phone bill, everything went through him. But he just got up, he just he went back home, whatever the deal was, right? So this guy, when he moved out of there, when, when we moved in, he was moving out of that situation. He was also going to move in with us. He had a cable box. Okay. Yeah. From his previous place that he was supposed to take back to the cable company, but he's like, the hell with it. It's not in my name. I don't care. Yeah, it makes it that easy. All right. Now, one thing that we learned to do then was it was a simple way you could, I swear to God, you could modify a cable box with a paperclip, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you could get the four extra channels, which are like HBO, Showtime, Cinemax, and whatever the other one was at the time. Uh, movie channel, I believe it was. Which one of you knew that a paperclip would allow this to happen? I, somebody showed it to one of my buddies. So Somebody had, huh. already, had figured this out. How I wish they, I had known that. Had to loop it around. So basically, we got all the channels that were available on this uh, on this cable system, which might maybe 35. I mean, the slide didn't go. Right, right. right. It was like a slide thing. It was, it was bizarre. But we had free cable uh, all year. So That's a good deal, man. And anybody who came in after us probably had the same deal. I'm assuming that the people downstairs, because there was a split, and whoever did that split in the basement used an electric split. So okay. you, you needed a little power to, once you split the cable, to kind of push more of a signal yeah. toward different points. So it was pretty, it's like a Radio Shack set up in, uh, in the basement, but the damn thing worked, man. I mean, we watched TV for free for a year. Not bad there. I remember splicing cable. R- roughly the same age, early 20s. Yeah. You kind of broke, but you want cable. Reason we asked, uh, what did you or someone else get away with uh, longer than expected? Uh, you probably aren't going to be able to spend Monopoly money without anyone catching on to you, but you might be able to get away with using fake movie money for a few months at least. I have seen movie money mm-hmm. in the studio. I don't know if the morning show had it at one point in time. Yeah, I think they did for something. But there. if you do look at it, you're like, oh my God, there's 20 bucks. And you pick it up. You're like, no, it says right on there for you know for movie money only. Well, a 41-year-old guy in uh, Jersey named James Leonard, he's finally been caught after passing fake bills at a convenience store. He's been doing this <laughs> since last September. Think about that. <laughs> Apparently, he'd intentionally go during busy times. The cashiers didn't have time to scrutinize the bill. Naturally, the bank wasn't fooled, but it took a long time to actually pin this on, uh, on James and then catch him in the act. Now, the bills were specifically designed for movie sets, and they do look a lot like actual currency, but they do say for motion picture only in fairly large letters across There's the front. There's your tip off. And in smaller letters along the side. So he was passing along 50s and 100s. Before he was caught, he has been uh, charged with theft by deception and uttering a forged document. I mean, that's the idea, right? Because then you get all the change. That's exactly which so. Which is real. You buy a couple packs of guns. Sorry, man. Can I break bill. down the hundred? Yeah, we got you, bro. Random, random, That random, seems wild. Even if it's random, busy, random, you wouldn't use the marker. Random, 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 but even then, it says random, right on the bill. It really does. I've seen it before. Random, it clearly says, like, for movies random, only or whatever. Promotional use. Because me like and I worked at a liquor store. I mean, like Friday and Saturday nights, you get super busy. But twenty and above, you better mark that thing. But it's also amazing to me what denominations people are unaware. Of. There was a story years ago. A guy was like either Walmart or Target. I don't remember, but they ended up calling the FBI on this guy because he was trying to pay for something. He had two dollar bills, and he could not convince the manager. He could not convince the cashiers that it's actual money. They're like, this is not real money. There's no $2 bill. He's like, I swear to God, there are $2 bill. Anyway, so they call the FBI. The FBI shows up. I'm talking about counterfeit money. FBI gets there. They're like, dude, it's a $2 bill. They're, they are perfect legal, uh, legal tender. And then there was a Walmart years ago where a guy paid, I want to say he had a $3 bill, which does not exist, and it had a picture of George Bush on it. And they accepted. 
Hmm. So you try to pay for two dollar bills, they call the FBI. Use a three dollar bill with George Bush, and they're like, "Cool, here's your change." Jesus, like, my God, man. Hello, Jeff. Welcome to the men's room. Hookers and bow, hookers and blood. Hold on, I think oh, we know what you're right. into. All right, I think we know what you're into, Jeff. I think we know what you're into, Jeff. <laughs> All right, let's go with this random question. Question: If we were to look right now in your glove compartment, what is in your glove compartment at this very moment, Jeff? Probably been there since you've had the car. No, I. Well, it hasn't been in there since I have the car. You can't. I can't say what's in there. You can't say what's in your glove compartment. No, no, I can't. If I pulled no, you I'm over and I'm a cop glove. and you opened your glove compartment, am I arresting you? Yes, sir. You are. Okay. I'm going to guess the guy that says hookers and blow, there's a good chance that it's not a hooker, but possibly some blow. I mean, I can't tell you what's in mine, but I just don't know that I've really opened it. I've only had that car since, what, like last May? Yeah, it's somewhere. You better check it out. Oh, you don't know what's in there, man. You better open it up and see. You might get arrested. That, that's actually that, a good question. But isn't that the worst? I know who I got the car from. Isn't that the worst place to hide something in a car from Yes, yeah. that's, that's what I would think. Right. I mean, especially if it, could, if it could land you in jail, that, that's where you're going for your registration, I'm assuming. That's where you're going for that's what your I'm saying. insurance. If I'm a cop, and you, you have something illegal, and you open this thing to show me whatever I've requested, and whatever you have in there comes tumbling out. Like, it does seem like a bigger problem than it needs to mm -hmm. be, man. Okay. I'm trying to think what's, I know, what the driver's manual, insurance, and uh, napkins that I pill for from any uh, napkins fast important. food. Man, you have no idea how many times you'll sneeze place. in your hand or something, yeah. and all of a sudden you get this big goo ball in your palm. And you need to get, I mean... You, That's why I always take a handful of napkins, you know, stuff them in the glove compartment, man. Yeah, or like a little drip of uh, gas at the mm -hmm. gas station. My favorite tennis right. they don't have any. They don't have any paper towels. You're just like, come on. My favorite the other day is that normally uh, to get into the garage here, you have to roll down your window and then you have to either press a button or use a card yeah. so that the gate will open so you can, you can park your car. So I had the window rolled down to do that. I did not realize. I, I typically keep it down until I park and then I put it up before I, you know, get out of the car. I apparently put it up, and I, I, I have a habit of, of spitting a lot. And I turn to my left, and I'm like, <laughs> and yes. the window's closed. And all of a sudden, now i got this wacky wall crawler coming down the inside of my window. I'm like, oh, my God, I just spit all over the inside of my car. <laughs> so, yeah, I need to have napkins in there. I'm telling times. you, man, have napkins. Yeah. The reason we ask what's in your glove compartment, uh, a mechanic has weighed in with suggestions on what useful items you should keep in yours. Oh, okay. Now, keep right. in mind, this guy is a mechanic, so he knows a little bit more about cars than most people. But he says you should have spare fuses. Good idea to have backups in case one blows while on the road. You can reference your vehicle manual if you don't know if you have 20s, 10s, 5s, whatever the deal is. Buy the right ones for your car. Sometimes it's not a bulb that went out. It's a fuse that went out right, as far right. as your lights and all the things that are on the interior of your car. Uh, a multi-tool. That is more than a Swiss Army knife. You've seen one of those. Yeah. Uh, it includes pliers, a screwdriver, small knife. Kind of looks like a switchblade sort of, sort of. I feel like it's something that Mike would just have on his belt at any given moment. <laughs> All right, pen and paper. Do we have pen and paper? I have a pen. Uh, I do have pen and paper in the car, yes. But yes. paper is everything that's just legal documentation as far as Yeah, that's like paper insurance. I have. So we I just use the back of receipts, but it's like keep that stuff mm -hmm. in there. A mini first aid kit. I have a mini first aid kit in my car, believe mm -hmm. it or not. I just found it about six months ago. We do not. It is in the back uh, hatch, and it's on the side. Was, it came with the car? You're yeah. Really? I saw a, a, a cross, and I was looking at it, and I was like, huh, and I opened it up. And I was like, I got, like, Band-Aids in here. And stuff. It came with the car. Nice. Yes. I'll be damned. Yes. Huh. That's what I said. Yeah. 2016. It's got a first aid kit. A tire pressure gauge. Okay. All right. Don't have one. but Typically yeah. now, though, most cars will tell you if you have a more modern car, if yeah. there's something going on with your tire. Uh, proof of insurance and registration. Of course. Yes, that's important. Your vehicle's manual. And finally, a flashlight. Do we have a flashlight? I don't know if we have. Yes, it's your phone. You know what? That's actually that's a good very call. good point. That is a very good point. Did you guys hear the story about the, uh, it was like a $14, 15000000 million jet, military jet, and they were doing some mechanical work on it. Um, and I guess it was in the engine area or whatever it was. And... Someone had left a handheld flashlight in there when they were doing the work. Okay. They closed everything up, and when they fired up the engine again, I don't know if it was an area where <laughs> it just started whipping around, it completely destroyed the aircraft. Oh, no. Jeez, $14 million, dollar, uh, oof, you know. No one's going left to admit. To, yeah, they it wasn't they, me. They, but all the guys that were working on the plane, they kind of let them, uh, you guys need some days off until you figure out <laughs> what exactly <laughs> happened here, because that was that was a very expensive mistake. So whoever left the flashlight in there. Man. Yeah, ruined a big piece of hardware. I mean, you figure they're working on jet engines and stuff like you 
Everybody's got to have one of those tiny lights. Guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Guaranteed. Just make sure you have it with you when you're done. Hello, Justin. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, Jonathan. Hola. Justin, welcome to the program. Ran a question, question. Okay. Let's go with this one. Throughout your lifetime, what did someone say about you that was not true? He's handsome, good and bad. Yeah, what did someone say about you that you're like, that's that's not that, that, that wasn't me. Um. Or even if they made an assumption about it. I had a they, boss. Bl- they blamed you for something and you weren't the one who did it. I had a boss who insisted that I was drunk oh. and stoned. And I'm like, I am neither of these things. I'm just poor and look bad, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, had a, I had a buddy. I thought I was a furry for a while. You thought he was a furry? No, he thought I, I was a furry. Why did he think you were a furry? What, what led him to believe this? So I was at a rave on a bunch of Molly, and there was a really soft furry girl, and I just like started cuddling with, with her, and then bam, Justin's a furry. Well, right. I mean, you were attracted to someone who was in costume, so yeah. I mean, I, I realize that that was the only reason, but at the time, I mean, it's, 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 it's an assumption that one could make. Oh, well, you know, I was like, I'm not technically a furry, but if there's a hot chick and I'm on Molly, I'm going to cuddle it. <laughs> All right. Okay. It kind of explains itself. Okay. I'm on Molly. Just fair. She's hot, I guess. Yeah. We know where this goes. Yeah, okay. We were uh, we were accused of a number of things at uh, previous employers. This employer as well is uh, very well justified based on the evidence and based on the fact that... Uh, I understand coming to us first, but don't make the accusation. That's the difference. Yeah, yeah right. You know what I mean? Like, it makes sense that you believe we are responsible for A, B, and C. Mm-hmm. And we are responsible for B, but not A and C. And you're yelling at us for all three. And it's like, hey, man, 66% of what you're mad about wasn't us. The unfortunate part is that the 33% you're correct about is the thing that has you the angriest. Yeah. You guys also deny an awful lot, too. So you kind of have to go in with dead to rights. I know you're lying. I plead ignorance about things <laughs> that I know you lie, Steve. Via, Yeah. I mean, look, I won't. So, like, one of the examples was uh, we did that show where we're all wearing diapers mm-hmm, to right. see if anyone could yeah. actually poop themselves, okay? so Well, we were trying to see if we could use the bathroom and change one, one, one or as, two. Right. Either as either an one. adult, either one. Can you, can you get your mind to just let it go wearing the diaper? And we brought the idea up, and uh, our old boss, Heart Club, was like, absolutely do not do that. It's a terrible idea. Well, he wasn't here one day. So we <laughs> we had the we had the depends. Right. So we, we chose to do it the day it just happened to that he wasn't no, here. We, we, I wouldn't bought him down to Bartell. <laughs> because he wasn't here. So Miles like ran down, we got it all set up. Well he shows up about halfway through the show. Yep. Uh and he's not he's not mm-hmm. screaming angry, but he was like, um I was listening to your little show and you guys kept mentioning that you're wearing diapers to see if he was you out of town. urinate or defecate yourself. I said, yes. He's like, I think we had the conversation a couple of weeks ago. And I said, don't do that. I said, you did. Why are you doing it? Because you, you weren't here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> well, when I, when I, the funny thing about that was when I went down to Bartell, uh, I can't remember what else I bought. I probably bought like an energy drink and a couple other things, but I bought this pack. It depends. Now, the guy who worked there. It's just depends, the guy, the guy, The guy who worked there at the time, every time uh, he would wait on me, immediately we started talking football. He's a Seahawks fan. I'm a Ravens fan. He's asking me questions. I'm asking him questions. What do you think about this guy? What do you think they're going to do here? Blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. So, you know, I have a rapport with him. He knows me. We, we talk football every time we're together. And so I put the Depends on the counter, and uh, Dre goes, what, what is this? I said, it's for work. And he said, what are you talking about? I said, we're going to try, we're gonna yeah, try to pee, work. We're gonna try to pee or poop ourselves on the air. And I don't think I mentioned what we did or what, <laughs> right. what kind of job I had at the time, because I think you ended up telling him later when you saw him at a bar. Yeah, I saw him at a bar. He had no yeah, idea. Yeah, right. So you were just I, really I, weird. I was just like, yeah, I'm doing it. We're doing it as a, as a thing for work to see if we can you know, use the bathroom uh, in our pants uh, and see how long we could hold it. And see if it's physically possible to do this. He's like, okay, man. And then, and then the next time, next time I came in there, he's like, uh. reason we asked, uh, <laughs> right. what did someone say about you that was not true? A former Van Halen frontman, Stephen Lee Roth, made some claims about his longtime rival and replacement, Sammy Hagar, saying the vocalist had been sex probed by aliens after being abducted as a teen in California. According to uh, uh, Sammy, he was abducted by aliens, Roth said, uh, during an episode on the Roth podcast titled The Ballad of Popsicle Sam. 
Uh, Roth said he was compelled to solicit the sordid subject in an effort to explain Hagar's conduct. After he said he has not spoken a single syllable to him in about uh, 10 years. <laughs> Roth claims the singer was taken by extraterrestrials while at a park when he was 15. I think we've arrived at both the technical and medical answer that may explain some of Sammy's conduct and his constant oh, yes. spew of diarrhea vitriol in our direction. Uh, Hagar was abducted by aliens and, <laughs> according to Roth, he was sex probed. Does it require an apparatus? Is it a beam? We don't know. We may never know. <laughs> But what I do know with absolute accuracy is that if you take a half of a popsicle and you jam it into a cassette tape player, no matter how carefully you extract the popsicle, that tape player will never play the same again. No matter how carefully you try and fix those delicate little parts, and it'll get worse, and it'll seem like the singer that you used to be will stop making sense whatsoever. That's Sammy Hagar. Oh, uh, yes! Sounds to me like Roth got abducted by aliens. That is weird, man. If I, if I believe one of them has been abducted by an alien before, it's Roth. Yep. Yeah. Believe it or not, though, in Sammy's autobiography, read My Uncensored Life in Rock, he says this when he was a teenager. They were plugged into me, the aliens. It was a download situation. Or maybe they uploaded something from my brain, like an experiment, Hager said. Uh, he said he has not made a public statement about Roth's podcast claims yet and refuses to, but he recommends you pick up the book if you want to read the, <laughs> the real story. Uh, but, yeah, no, what, how do you respond to that? Be like, sure. He was Everything he said is true. Yes. By aliens. Coming up, your guess is as good as mine. Our categories today, the most friendly accents in the world and states that have more cows than people. And we get your emails coming up next in the men's room at KISW.com. Need to stock up on any weather wardrobe staples? Check out American Giant for hoodies, jackets, sweats, and more pieces you can wear anywhere, all made right here in the USA. Go to American-Giant.com and use code AnyStyle24 for 20% off your order. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the men's room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The Podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. The debauchery rolls on. You're listening to The Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Most uh, friendly accents in the world and uh, the states that have more cows than people. Coming up with your guess is as good as mine. But first time for a few emails from The Men's Room at KISW.com. You've got mail. You've got mail. We'll jump right into the birthdays. Hola, guys. Want to give a birthday shout out to my daughter, Cadence. This is her 10th trip around the sun. She's been waiting three years for this birthday, so she can finally get a shout out on the air. Uh, guys, she fell in love with the show a few years ago when Steve was toasting the shot of the day and said, down the throat, like Sylvester the cat. She laughs so much and listens uh, for it every day, hoping that you'll do it again there, Steve. Down the throat. She's the most talented and hilarious girl I know. She's got a very bright future ahead of her in whatever she pursues. Uh, the sound of her first uh, cry still reverberates in my head. <laughs> Love you, Goober. Can she get a little kid fish sandwich? And she hopes Steve can do the silly throat thing uh, as well. Thanks, guys, and rock on that from the Sithly one. Fish sandwich. And down the f Throat. I believe she has no idea who Sylvester the cat is either. Throat. Mm -hmm. Throat. Yeah, let's see. Uh, guys, yeah, my she wife might. I feel like those some parents watch old cartoons. Yeah, that's true. You know, I'm going to ask my kids today when I get home. Do you guys know who Sylvester the cat is? Uh, guys, my wife, uh, Naoko, and I would like to wish our son Matthew a very happy 22nd birthday from Silverdale. He is currently a college student at Olympic College in Bremerton. How about an OG fish sandwich and Coach Ted encouraging him to finish strong at college? Thanks, guys. That from Joey and Naoko Smith. No relation to Ted, at least that we know of. Two Oregon fish sandwich. What's he got left? Two years? He's 22. So he could be close. All right. I don't know. I never went to a four-year college. So I don't know how long they even last. Well, you start when you're 18. Ideally. Uh, all right. Well, you yeah, they're right. Like, who knows? Maybe you went to Juco for a couple years. Either way, it sounds like you're close to the finish line. Don't give up now. I know you're going out and you're having fun and enjoying those house parties, but you're right there. Get that degree. Finish. All I got to say is my nephew Josh is 42nd orbit around the plasma ball in the sky. Could you give him a couple of thrill shotgun gets? Ted giving advice on smoking meat and Miles with some dad jokes. Thanks, guys. That from Juan. Get. 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 
I mean, look, depends on what kind of meat you're smoking, but remember, if you're barbecuing stuff for real, it's low and slow. Second of all, don't be afraid to use mustard as a binder for your dry rubs. Ooh. Third of all, make sure you wrap that bad boy. Let it rest for enough time so it'll still cook internally, and that'll get the temperature right where you want it. Mm, good advice. Yeah. Okay, some dad you need to you. smoke us some meat, man. Yeah. <laughs> I need to be able to have a smoker. <laughs> Guys, I, uh, I tried to take a picture of myself in a hot shower, but it didn't work because I have self-esteem issues. Did you know that people think the stuff you cough up is mucus? No, I didn't know that. It's not. I started playing silent tennis, guys. Silent tennis? Yeah, it's just like regular tennis without the racket. Sounds here. Guys, I want to wish my wonderful boyfriend, Tim, a fantastic 44th birthday. Can I please get an original fish sandwich and coach Ted with a pep talk on how even with all the coaching and player changes this year, the Seattle sports teams are going to have a great upcoming year. Oh, yeah. Thanks, guys, for all that you do. That from the lovely Laura. Do I get a fish sandwich? All right. I'll start with Seattle Sanders. Same coach. They should be better this year. <laughs> Kraken, I don't know. That's a streaky team. They've been streaky as long as they've been an NHL team. Yes. So hopefully they kind of turn that around. Now, the big one, obviously, is going to be the Seahawks and the Washington Huskies. Washington Huskies, that is the toughest, hardest week in college football ever. That coach left with in a business week, not even seven days. Coach Fish knows what he's doing, though. He's bringing in some recruits. And shout out to all the UW players that actually stayed and didn't follow the board. Mm -hmm. Guys, Seahawks. Miles, there's oh, sorry, a lot of sorry, coaching sorry, changes. Sorry, sorry, you're right. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Seahawks. I have no idea what's going on. But as I've been telling Mike, I really like the roster here. I think you still need a different quarterback. Sorry, Gino. And I think you need some edge rushers. But bring in somebody and let's open this offense up. Feed DK. <laughs> And finally, on the birthdays, liquor and horse bitches. Today is my dad Chuck's birthday. He is 55 Chuck years Chuck. old. So, could he get an OG fish sandwich, a suck it up cupcake, and some thrill shotgun gets? Love you, dad. That from your son, Court, aka Meathead. Fish sandwich. So, suck it up cupcake. Dick. 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 Oh. Okay, guys, here you go. <laughs> Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday to you, to you, to you. Yas a Dirty Germans brought to you by Men's Room Original Sausage. Available through Uli's world famous sausage, mensroomlive.com, and other fine retailers. Mmm, <laughs> Schweinefleisch. Thank you, Bob. Let's get a contestant on the line for your guess is as good as mine now. Call 206 803 Rock and get ready to play the game. Uh, in the meantime, a couple extra emails. Foods that people cook wrong. Okay. All right. Jen's uh, catching up on the podcast. You guys are talking about the uh, ramen noodles and not using the packet, but instead putting butter on them. Thought I'd share what we do in case anyone is interested. My war, uh, wife is born and raised in Hawaii. She is white with red hair, but raised on Oahu. Uh, this is how she makes it and where her inspiration came from. She'll take Spam, slice it up, and then soak it in teriyaki for 15 minutes. When it's done, she pan fries that. She will then prepare the noodles without the packet. In a pan, she will then start to stir fry some vegetables. When everything is done, it's layered in a bowl. Noodle base, stir fry, spam. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of spam, but it's great. I'll also add shirat, uh, sriracha or, or uh, chili sauce right. uh, from uh, Squirrel. Doesn't sound like the worst thing in the world, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, trip doesn't to sound like the best thing in the world, but certainly mm -hmm. does not sound like the worst thing in the world. Trip to the bathroom being a memorable experience. Gentlemen, when I was in uh, grade school, my bus route home over an hour. Jesus, So man. by the time I got home this particular day, I really had to go. Ted, you're going to love this story. Ran into the house and proceeded to whiz with the door open and everything. Well, right. the bathroom was right across from my bedroom, where the afternoon sun out my window was right on the white carpet. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed what looked like my belt laying across the floor. Confirming that I was wearing the only belt that I own, I fully look over and see a two-foot bull snake sunning itself on my bedroom floor. I finished up, and then over the next 20 minutes, I tried to corral the snake into a shoebox using oven mitts and my dad's back scratcher. <laughs> Let's just say he was rather pissed off and not very cooperative. I had a fear of snakes before that day, but that event was the icing on the cake. Thanks, guys. That from uh, Swano. Ted, uh, that's terrifying. You, my wife terrified of snakes. Can't even look at them on TV. My mother terrified of snakes. 
I came home one day after high school. And my mother's always very well put together. Her hair is crazy. Her shirt's buttoned up weird. And she's talking like this. And I'm like, hey, mom, what happened? So long story short, she found a snake in the kitchen, which freaked her out. But she had to get and it's a garter snake. Just keep that in mind. It's not venomous. It's not going to do anything. But she tried to, as she explained it, and she, it was a very expletive-filled explanation. And she's screaming all this to me, but she's like, and this is where my mother snaps. So she goes, I tried to get it out of the kitchen, and I hit it with the broom, and he raised his mother effing head up, and he hissed at me. <laughs> that set my, mm-hmm. the fact that this snake had the audacity to hiss at her, as she put it in my own mother effing house. She beat that thing to death with the broom <laughs> and swept it outside. I mean, that's, but, if you but, don't but the, like snakes, the process, that's the worst. But she explained the process took like an hour and a half. Yeah. And she just said, I called your father. And he's like, I'm at work. What do you want me to do? Figure it out. Correct. And she was not okay when I got home, man. That was, that was a big deal for her, Ted. And one more bathroom stories, guys. Uh, listening on the Odyssey app and had to ride in. It was 2009. Somebody as I uh, just got back from deployment in Afghanistan. So we decided to go all out. Big, long weekend in Vegas. And by this, I mean... We were uh, nothing, uh, wore nothing but tailored suits, uh, cruised in limos, spent way too much on the hotel room itself. You know what? If I'm getting back from Afghanistan, I'm doing the same Hell damn thing. Hell yeah. It was a very memorable weekend in many ways, but it starts with a bathroom story. By the time we got to our rooms, we had already had a few, so I was feeling good uh, taking a look at this huge room we have. I get to the bathroom. There are two toilets right next to each other. And this being 2009, I barely heard of a bidet, but never actually saw one. So here I am, inspecting this weird toilet with all these knobs and levers. Well, I guess I must have turned the pressure all the way up. Because when I finally pulled the flush lever, this thing shoots a water stream all the way up to the ceiling. By the way, they're 10 feet high in this room. Jesus, man. Hits me in the face. Soaks my nice new suit jacket. I came out of the bathroom looking like Ace Ventura. <laughs> anyway, uh, never have used a bidet again. Cleaned up and had an amazing weekend. Thanks, guys, for all the laughs. That from David. All right, time for a little your guess. This is as good as mine. It's an easy game to play. We get contested. You pick from one of two categories. And then try to get as many right in said category before three strikes and you're out. Steve, who is our contestant ready to play your guess, is as good as mine. Hello, Michael. Welcome to the men's room. Liquor and hordes. Liquor and hordes. Michael, welcome to the program. Your guess is as good as mine. Okay, Michael, here are your categories, quite simply. We have a list of U.S. states US states with more cows than people. More cows than people in these states. Then your other category is, we have the most friendly accents around the world. That doesn't mean they're all different languages. It just means that the accent, when they speak English, they speak the accent, whatever okay. accent they have is one that you find. So you can speak French. If you like the accent, you go, oh, we oui, oui. <laughs> What else do you know in French? Uh, Merci beaucoup. Uh, French fries. Croissant. Uh, French toast. French uh, bread. All the French things. onion soup. I could say the name of a few towns just as soccer. Give me one. Lyon. Lyon. I know Lyon. Nice. Marseille. All the big ones. Paris. Michael, what do you want to do there? You want to do the most friendly accents or uh, U.S. states with more cows than people? Oh, I mean, out of sheer curiosity, I got to go with the cows. I mean, that's... Okay. Uh, Now that Miles brought it up, you really want to know, don't you? Yeah, but here's the bonus on this one. Just so you know, you picked the right category, Michael, because there's only nine states in the United States that have more cows than people. That's a good thing. It's one less, so if you go nine for nine, you still are going to be perfect on your guess. is as good as mine, but yes. Uh, As of 2022, there are nine states in the United States that have more cows than people. I will tell you the population of the state if you get it right and the number of cattle that live there. See, now the game is played. Guess as many times as you want before three strikes and you're out. The idea is to get all nine correct. So what is your first guess? More cows than people. Uh, I I have like zero idea where to go with this. Think number. about some Montana? Place, man. Montana, Wyoming. I'm trying to think of places that don't have a lot of people, but they yeah. got a lot of cowboys. Yeah. I mean, Texas has a lot of cows, but they also have a but lot they of got people. A lot of people yeah. The Dakotas. People too. That's right. Um, yeah. My knee jerk was Wyoming for whatever reason, first off. So you want to go Wyoming? Yeah. Number five on the list of states with more cows than people. The population of Wyoming. VD, 582,658. And that entire state. The state has half a million people. All right. Uh, Cows have 1,270,000 of them roaming around Wyoming. (laughs) So double the population of Wyoming and cows. Very good, Michael. One for one. Um... 
I would go north and south Dakota and Montana. Yeah, Montana's probably not. Let's go Montana. Montana's number three. Montana has oh. more people than Wyoming. 1,015,000 people. All right. Great steakhouses, too. That's because they have 2,550,000 cows. Mike, that's exactly right. Again, over double the population of people. More cows in Montana than people. Good Lord. Crazy. Mm-hmm. I have a two for two. Two for two. Um, Iowa, Nebraska, Arkansas. Nebraska could be mm-hmm. good. I think Nebraska and Iowa and the Dakotas. I might go Oklahoma. That, yeah, yeah, that might be a solid. Actually, that's a solid guess, yeah. All, all great suggestions. I'm gonna go. I like, I like Iowa. For the- you like Iowa? Okay. Population of Iowa is three million ninety thousand people. Cows, three million seven hundred. Oh, oh just yeah, that's got exactly right. More cows than people. One point two cows per person in the state of Iowa. You're three for three, Michael. What number was that? That was number uh, eight. That was number eight. Not that it matters. Um, North Dakota. North Dakota. Number four. Mm. Population of North Dakota, 723,000 people. Number of cattle, 1,770,000. Ratio, 2.45 cows per person in North Dakota. You've got uh, over double there. How's that not on a bumper sticker? Exactly. All right, so far, four for four. No strikes against you. These are the states with more cows than people. Let's keep the Dakotas going. Let's go South Dakota. Number one. Oh, that's the number population one. population of South Dakota is 844,000 people. The number of cattle in South Dakota, 3,650,000. So a four to one ratio in South Dakota. Four to one. As far as cows to people. there are For every person, there are four cows. It's amazing. Oh, that's right. a sales pitch. You're five for five. There are nine states that have more cows than people. What's your next guess? Um, Some suggestions from the text line include Texas, which I would not pick, Kansas, Oklahoma, Nebraska, uh, New Mexico, Idaho, and Utah. Okay. Why? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Nebraska. Nebraska. Number two. The right, population right. of Nebraska, 1,868,000 people. Cattle in Nebraska, the most in any state, 6,150,000. Good. Gosh. You've got 3.3 cows per person in Nebraska compared to people. Wow. You got to think the beef is good. So you're correct on number one, South Dakota, number two, Nebraska, number three, Montana, number four, North Dakota, number five, Wyoming, and number eight, Iowa. There are three states that remain. Good for you, though. You've got three strikes that you can use that you have not used yet. So I know it's known for potatoes, but maybe they got cows over there, too. Let's do Idaho. Number seven. All right. Population of Idaho, 1,600,000 people. Number of cows, 2,190,000. So, yes, 1.36 cows per person in the state of Idaho. (laughs) Believe it or not, the state known for potatoes. All right, you got seven and nine. We Two got states Tanners remain. And cows. Um, I haven't said Arkansas yet, have Uh-oh. I? Oh, nope. You know what's United States, Elmer? Arkansas is that what you said? Yeah. No, nah, nah, they got hogs. They got more people than cows. It's a very mountainous state, so it's very difficult to do farming yeah, yeah. in those areas. True, true, true. Um, Think flat, baby. Flat man, flat. Uh, right, Utah, maybe. If we're going flat. I, I might think Kansas. Yeah, yeah, actually, that's a good call. Yeah, 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 let's do that. Number six, Kansas has 2,893,000 people, 5,800,000 cows, two cows per person in Kansas. Aren't they lucky? All right, uh, Michael, you got two strikes to work with. You've got one state left that has more cows than people in the United States. Um, actually, we've not hit yet the flat ones. Uh, actually, let's go New Mexico. New Mexico. Not on the list. Uh, um, track left. Ted, tell me out here. Maybe I mean, Utah. I really don't know, so, but maybe Utah. What else, Ray? Right? We had Montana's up there. Got Idaho's Montana, up there. Wyoming. We did do Wyoming. Wisconsin, Iowa. Minnesota's all up there. I still just think Oklahoma, just because Texas has too many people. Did we not say Oklahoma? Mm, not yet. 
Yeah, maybe Oklahoma, dude. I really, I don't know, but that 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 would be my guess. Uh, let's do it, Oklahoma. That is correct, number nine on the list. Oh. You got them all. all right. Nice work, nice work. The nine states with more cows than people in the United States. Number nine is Oklahoma. The population, 3,850,000. The number of cows, 4,300,000. So more than one uh, cow per person in Oklahoma. Iowa comes in at number eight. Seven is Idaho. Kansas is six. Wyoming is number five on the list. Four is North Dakota. Three, Montana. Nebraska, two. And South Dakota. With a population of 844,000 people, but 3,650,000 cows is number one with a 4.32 cow per person ratio compared to humans. Quit bragging. Exactly. There you go. With these states with the more cows uh, than people. Coming up, we'll drink a toast with a shot of the day. You are listening to The Men's Room. 99.9 KISW. The shenanigans continue. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. All right, so coming up, we'll uh, drink a toast with a shot of the day, and we also have your headlines on the way at 5.50. But first, quick check out with Mike Hawk and some of the stories and headlines he is not working on. Thank you, Miles. <clears throat> yes. A small asteroid landed just west of Berlin last night. Asteroid? Asteroid. All right. Meteor. Meteor. It'd be a, a meteor, meteorite. Meteorite. My bad. Yes. I wrote if that If it down touches wrong. the ground, it's meteorite. A meteor is the one that burns up in the sky. An asteroid, I feel like we would know because Berlin would not exist anymore. Exactly. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was if a, you're wondering what happened to Berlin. It's a meteorite. <laughs> and there's video of it. You know, it's just, it was one of those where it, most of it burned up on the way in. And there's just most a couple, of it burned up. You know what's crazy? Of it's like most of them are like iron or whatever. Mm -hmm. Think about how heavy iron is. How fast those things are moving. Right. right. And this thing is from space and just comes rocketing into the ground. That's, exactly. I'm not particularly worried about getting hit by one, but if it does hit you, don't worry about well, it. Well, they were saying it was like three feet in diameter. No worry, it's only three feet in diameter. Like, it's a piece of uh, iron. Right. Take a three-foot piece of iron and hit someone with it. it I'm, I'm selling it if I find it, though. How does that work? Do right? you get to keep it? I, I don't know because so. there's all these weird things. If it's like, on your property. Right, but if I dig up, I don't know, we're going to put a new deck in the backyard or something, you dig it up and there's like, you know, a mammoth skeleton mm -hmm. down there or something. I feel like somehow, either the Fed or the local, whatever, somehow they seem to get jurisdiction over And that. I claim BS on that. I no, think that's they're, crap. They're taking jurisdiction on that. Exactly. You like know, eminent domain. Right, because if a pipe down there bursts... That's my problem. It comes out of my ass, that's right. But you know what, that should be the thing. You could take my mammoth skeleton that I found, but if that's the case then you guys deal with all the infrastructure issues of my home. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The U.S. has uh, 5,244 nuclear weapons constantly moving around the country, and you've likely driven past one at some point. I was okay right, that. makes that. sense. Just yeah, I was like, cause, oh, you, and you didn't even know it. I'm like, well, that's good. Yeah, yeah they I, shouldn't have a truck that says nuclear bomb. Right. Exactly. <laughs> that's a fine thing. There's a, there's a place by my buddy's uh, grandmother's property in West Virginia. It's in the eastern panhandle. And there's a huge chain link fence that goes all the way around the perimeter of this facility. On top of this mountain is two silo 18-wheeler sized garage doors that go in with a small adjo adjo adjacent building that has one door, which is an elevator shaft. Right. right. All the people who work in that area work for, quote, the federal government. <laughs> All right. There's a parking lot on top of this mountain, right beside this, like, like a mall size, like a strip mall size parking lot. It's full every day. It's one door. It's one building. Now, the problem with that is for him is, is that if he shoots a deer, which he is inclined to do, he likes to bow hunt. Sure. They run down the perimeter line of the fence. So for him to drag that carcass back up, oh, to get right. back to where he was, if the deer runs, if he misses, or if he doesn't hit it right in the kill zone, mm -hmm. that he's got to haul this thing up along the, which is not convenient. He should just be able to go right over top of it, exactly. but he can't because the damn fence is barbed wired and runs all the way down a mile through the property. For the guys, I am not here I'm for the, your secrets. Yeah. I'm just hauling I just, a deer yeah, carcass. I just want to bring this damn thing home. <laughs> right. Come on, man. Help me out. Come on, brother. Yeah. Let me in. Yeah, but basically, they were saying that there, there are, uh, you know silos there's there's facilities all over the place that house these things yeah. and then routinely they have to be carried somewhere for maintenance and so mm -hmm. honestly they're just almost on a rotation around the country yeah. at all times huh. not only that but they i would think for security reasons you just want to keep moving them too i would sure. definitely agree there's these ba uh, big ass space telescopes right beside this place too yeah okay so within a three mile radius of that area you can't use your cell phone Oh, so throws it all ah, right. I don't know what the deal is on that, but they just don't have it in that area. They either jam it or they just don't allow it. I don't know. 
Damn. That makes sense. It's weird. The National Transportation Safety Board is urging parents not to travel on planes with their children in their lap following the Alaska Airlines incident. Think about the warning they give and why. Right. Just in case. What we're saying is we believe four doors are going to pop off during the flight. Your kid will this be sucked This might out. happen again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's just the weirdest warning ever. Uh, in case the door pops off of the airplane, don't put your kid on the lap. And I'm thinking, why don't you address the doors right. more than to worry about the parents with the kids? Man, this is Because whether my kid's in my lap or not, if the door blows off the plane while we're mid-flight, it's going to be panic everywhere. This is going to be a situation where your grandkids will look back at our generation where we used to just have our babies sitting on our laps. This is the equivalent the of the kid in the pickup, right? That's exactly Can right. Believe? Can you believe they did that? My God, I mean, the doors pop off of these things all the time. I know. See, here's my problem. <laughs> I feel like the NTSB is trying to normalize this. Yes, that's exactly what's happening. And one last suggestion. If the oxygen mask come down, place it over your face first. And one last thing. Right. Uh, please do not put your child in your lap, even though they're screaming and crying, and this is the only thing that'll shut them up, because eh, the door might just, just blow Just turn the, the doggone off. things into, into convertibles and let's just get through it. Let's just do it. Right. Let's just go to go to Vegas with the mm-hmm. top down on this thing. She ut. God, I have this awful imagery now. But you know Having what? Having traveled my kids all the time, especially when they were younger, to shut them the hell up you put them in your lap. Mm-hmm. And yes, my son spilled a beer and peed on me at the exact same time. Indeed. I'll tell you right now, when that happened, if that door popped off and sucked his ass out, I'd have been okay. That's also a bad way to make friends, Steve. And in fact, some What's people that? some people actually ha- have a hard time making friends. And some people don't know why they have a hard time making friends. But I'm here to tell you. The Men's Room Top 10. The Men's Room Top 10. 10 Reasons. You don't make friends very easily. You're VD. I could, I suppose, if I cared to, make friends. But I do not care to. I do not care to be beleaguered by your small talk. Beleaguered. So who do you know here? How about that weather? Crazy game last night between blah, 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 and ha, ha, ha. (laughs) I want to be the person that's been rotting for three months before someone smells the remains of my earthly vessel. Have a nice day. Such a positive individual. And what most people don't know about BD, he writes cards for Hallmark. He does. Yes. <laughs> With the <laughs> same warm uh, tidings. The news is his dog will eat him, so it won't be decomposed. There you go. <laughs> so these are the reasons that you don't make friends very easily. Uh, you tend to overthink social interactions. Well, sure. Oh, if you in- do something awkward, maybe. Right. If you're if you're someone who replays conversations in your head and worries about every word, it can hinder your ability to make friends easily. Overthinking can lead <laughs> yeah. to anxiety and keep you from being present and in the moment. I've been told by my wife I do not suffer that at all. I suffer from underthinking. Yeah, that's right. That is. You just have to go back and apologize clear. for what you said. Yeah, I'm all right with that. The apology is sincere. I really am sorry, but we both know it will happen again. Oh God, your energy levels are misunderstood. Maybe you're an introvert who gets drained by too much socializing or an extrovert who's always up for a party. Either way, if people can't gauge your energy levels, they might not know how to approach you. I think yeah. you have a good idea where someone's coming from. You should is the for thing. For the most part. But there's certain people that are just... It's just their nature. They're just super deadpan. Sure. I know one person at the top of my mind, who doesn't matter what you say to them, they're always about right here. A.E. Dave. Dude, your your team won the Super Bowl. Cool. And they're enthusiastic. They just, they have no ability to show it, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah, like some people aren't trying to be mean. They just don't have a lot of emotion. Right. Also know who to ask for Adderall. (laughs) On the flip side. Uh, let me ask you a question. <laughs> you got any more Adderall? <laughs> hang on. Look, you got I, any I wanna, more Adderall? I want to hang for an hour uh, here, and I know you're uh, I know you got Adderall on pretty peppy, so uh, <laughs> hook me up in that purse real quick. <laughs> Some people just aren't very social people to begin with. Yeah, that's, yeah. So they just don't like it. Like, I, I know, I have a few friends that I know through other stuff, and I'm always like, why don't you come? And they're like, I, I just hate being around that many people. It's like, right, right. So it's not their thing. Yeah. Like, All right. They prefer to host. Uh, you're not big on compromise. Friendship is a two-way street that often involves meeting in the middle, and if you're set in your ways, it might be tough for other people to connect with you. Well, sure. Right. I mean, I like they put a list out there. What do you mean? I don't know. Like, to me, like, I guess there is these reasons, but, like, if you're bad at making friends, well, you might just be an a-hole. 
I, I, overwhelmingly, that is my belief, yes. That too, yes. You kind of suck as a person. But we're breaking it down, Ted. We yeah. are. These are the reasons that other people think you're an a-hole. Exactly. That's what I'm getting out of this list. Kind of like how you have a hard time trusting people. Trust is the foundation of any relation, uh, any friendships, but it's if it's hard for you to trust, making friends can be a challenge. It's okay to take things slow, but remember, not everyone is out to break your trust. Yeah. yeah. Or what are you confiding in them? Or what do you, you know what I mean? Like... It's it's more you're keeping your walls up. Nobody is able to have a meaningful conversation I got with you, you I got because you, okay. you know you're too burnt you by just, it. Yeah. And okay. you do, and it's difficult, and you have to train yourself for. It, but you do have to go in with a blank slate of everybody. And yeah, you're going to hurt yourself with a handful of these people. But at the same time, let them prove you right as opposed to believing that you're right. And yes. sometimes let them. Yeah, I was gonna, you, you just said it. Yeah, let them prove you're right. Because <laughs> there is some people I'll go. I don't know. I just think it a good very like good vibe off that person. That dude seems a little off. Yeah. When you hang out a few times, it's like, yeah, that, that dude sucks. Right. Exactly. And there there are times when you get a good good vibe on people, and then after a while, it's like, oh, you oh, soured fast. Yeah. yeah. You soured fast. Maybe you're a stickler for perfe- uh, perfection. Sometimes aiming for perfection can make it hard to connect with people. Not everybody is going to meet your high standard, and, and that's okay. Embracing imperfections in people and in social interactions can lead to more genuine and less stressful friendships. Also, if you're a friend... I don't want to be perfect for you. We're going to... Most of my friends are very imperfect. That's why we're friends. Exactly. We're going to sit back and drink. That guy's an a-hole. He'd say the same thing about me, but we get along genuinely. Right. You know? Exactly. Uh, Your digital life overshadows real interactions. Oh, God. Yes, I've known these people. It's easy to overlook the value of face-to-face interactions, especially since everyone is addicted to their phones. While online friends are real, too, balancing screen time with in-person activities can open up new avenues for friendships. Yes. Yeah, without a doubt, man. And and the rules in the digital world are different than the rules out here. Much different. That's why, Just, one, you go by a moniker online, and two, you wouldn't say half the things a person that you say online. Exactly. My big thing is just don't involve me. If I don't know, like, don't tag me and tell everybody where the hell we are. Right. Oh, God. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that, that's kind of gone away, but that used to be a massive thing on Facebook. It was just like... Right. Dude, like, don't tag me in that. <laughs> right. Like, it's just Saturday night. We're just at a spot in the neighborhood. We're like, just I, having fun. Yeah. And also, like, who cares if people know where we're at? Exactly. Why are you telling them on social media? <laughs> Why are you tagging me in these things? Yeah, exactly. I, I don't care about this. <laughs> right? I have never shown any interest in basket weaving, other than I took the merit badge. <laughs> uh, I mean, look, there's a lot. And you got it. You, you got it. And you got it, yeah. You got a great uh, bathroom uh, trash can. Indeed. I mean, look, I took an elective in high school. It was yearbook. The hell I, I did the same thing. But I'm saying, like, it's not like there's yearbooks well, after you get ed- out of there, so it's kind of a pointless but, but, thing to do. But you're editing, you're, you're putting things graphically in places you, as far sure. as page Design placement. and all that. Yeah, yeah. correct. I mean, and you get out of class. There's some element of that, picking the right pictures, picking the right captions, writing all those things. Nothing about yearbook class has helped me as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> same with Mike's basket weaving. Oh, that's, that's the, no, that's no, the oh, point. No, no, no. It gives you, it gives you one up on all of the, your of your peers because they know if they want some extra pictures of them in the yearbook, <laughs> Oh, yeah. Give it a kiss your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Reasons that you don't make friends very easily. As Ted said, you avoid social situations altogether. You just, crowds are not your thing, so you don't go to places where there's crowds, so you don't meet new people. That's fair. I mean, I get it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you have a niche set of interests. <laughs> Having a unique right. interest is awesome, but it can make connecting with a wider range of people a bit harder. Try exploring new activities or broadening your interest. And I do encourage people to do that. Usually, you know, maybe maybe it's something that you didn't consider that you might actually like. And then you give sure. it, you know, why would I be interested in that? Well, give it a shot. And then you find out that you actually do like it. I would also argue that whatever your situation, you're not alone. And if, if anything has taught me that lesson, it is this show, right? So someone to call in. And they have a horrible story or a spectacular story that seemed very individual. Mm -hmm. And then we get 50 texts from people that are like, oh, yeah, man, did the same thing. Been through the same thing. Exactly. No one thing. Whatever you do, I promise you, you you're not alone. That's right. Guaranteed, man. But then the number one reason that you don't make friends very easily. This is going to shock you guys. I'm a serial killer. Close. You're a bit of a loner. Enjoying your own company is great, but sometimes it might come off as not being interested in other people. While being independent is a strength, striking a balance is key. 
Being approachable and open to new interactions can make a world of difference in forming new relationships. Yeah. Don't forget, showing a bit of interest in other people's lives and what they're up to can spark new connections. Sometimes it's about stepping out of your comfort zone and embracing the social world a bit Think about more. it this way. When someone asks how you've been, what's, what's going on with your life, all those things, uh, when you let them know what's going on, then you ask them. Ask them. Yes. Exactly. Just right. And then listen and to then, them. And then listen to them. Exactly. That's the big part. Right. I usually get up and go to the bathroom at that point. Mm-hmm. No, there's so many people that have said only important things about me. Ask. They don't care. No, they don't They're care. just waiting for them to start talking That's again. It's like, and you can t- you can see yeah, it. It's like, all right, well, I'm not going to hang out with you because it sucks. Exactly. <laughs> a, a major company is facing backlash after denying a mother a remote work request. But Miles, it gets even worse. What was that? I'll give you all the details okay. at 550. Headlines are coming at 550. In the meantime, let's get a contestant on the line for Profile. This at 206-803-ROCK. Have we made it to drinking time? Every year, one thing is always predictable. Postage costs go up. Stamps.com gives you crazy discounts of up to 89% off USPS and UPS services, so your business will barely notice the change. Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses just like yours. It's like your own personal post office. No lines, no traffic, no waiting. Sign up with promo code PROGRAM for a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. That's Stamps.com code PROGRAM. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the Men's Room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The Podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the Men's Room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Good time it is, and as usual, we head to Z during Jask and Steve at Thrill Hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed, and today we toast 25-year-old Justin Carpenter of Lawrence, Indiana. Now, Justin is currently outfitted with an ankle monitor because of a prior drug arrest. Turns out, ankle monitored or not, he likes his drugs. He was recently rearrested after police found him with weed, cocaine, Oxycodone, Xanax, THC cartridges, ecstasy, and scales. Now, the reason the cops found uh, his substantial stash is because hours earlier, Justin visited Buffalo Wild Wings, but the kitchen was closed. He tried to convince the staff to reopen the kitchen. They said no. He said, I'll make a deal with you. He came up with a barter exchange. He offered them weed, cocaine, THC vapes and ecstasy in exchange for Ted, what would you get at Buffalo Wild Wings? I'm offering you all these drugs because I want one thing that is on your menu. I'd say like pepper a wings? Dozen wings, something like that. He did it for fried pickles. Oh, well, <laughs> frickles, all right. They didn't accept his offer, but they did call the cops, and Justin ended up being busted because he likes fried pickles that freaking much. Damn. Damn. Yeah, and the cops are like, bro, you're already on an ankle monitor. We searched your car. You have like seven different drugs. Frickles are underrated, though. No, I mean, not. it depends. If they, if they do the strips, I don't like them as much as the chips. As the coins, yeah. So sometimes they'll do like the uh, the quarter. Agreed. I don't like this. Full agree. No. What does Buffalo Wild Wings do? How do they do their fried they got chips? The, they have fried, yeah. Generally, a place should put fried pickle spears if you're going to like do them that way. You're a spears guy. No, no, no. The, the chips are the way to go. They should be mm-hmm. labeled fresh. They should be labeled that way. Oh, I see what Because if you get them expecting pickled chips, you're kind of like, oh, man. This sucks. <laughs> man, my frickles aren't the frickles I wanted. <laughs> See the fridge. It's a frickle log. But dude's going back to jail for some, <clears throat> for some frickles. <laughs> I just, I'm Are sorry, man. I have a hard time. Mike, it's like you and I always say, commit a crime. If you're going to uh, commit a crime, don't do it naked. You made it worse. Right. This guy, if you're going to go back to jail, fine. Not for frickles. Come on, man. That's ter- and it's just a bad deal for him. Yeah, this stuff costs a lot more than fried. You're pickles. gonna give them all these drugs for frickles. Quick side note: Had I worked at Buffalo Wild Wings, he'd have gotten his frickles, yes, and right. I'd have gotten my drugs. Yeah, but we pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. 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 So over the tongue and down the <laughs> throat to party in our tummies. Down, down the hole, la bajola. The men's room presents Profile This. Hey, Stephen Throw Hook, could you please, everyone? Now, Profile This is played. I sure can, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real life news story, something that happened right here 
on planet Earth. Earth, 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 Earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. And of course, either our caller got hung up on, oh, or going. they or they hung up on okay. us. I do not know. They What's were there, and now they're not. Well. Today, Miles, you have your choice of one of three categories. We have the wonderful world of drugs. Okay. We have bite me. In other words, what did somebody find in their food? And finally, interior decorating, where you guessed the foreign object that ended up on the inside of someone. Dead. Interior decorating. God damn it. What the hell's going on? Oh. A show. What? Well, see, the problem with paper clips, man. I try Is that to what be you organized. I put the paper clip on there, and I stuck it to all the other crap. There we go. All right, so interior decorating for Ted. A driver found carrying something following a hit-and-run crash involved a bicyclist who's also paraplegic. Deputy said the crash happened around 6 o'clock near Sesame Boulevard, which is where the hand-pedal bicyclist was struck by a Ford hatchback before it fled the scene. Missed opportunity, Sesame Boulevard. It is Sesame but Just say street. Why would you do that? I digress. Now, according to the sheriff's office, the bicyclist, one Stephen Watkins, had previously contracted life-threatening staph infection while working as a detention deputy, which left him paralyzed from the chest down. He suffered minor injuries in this particular incident and was taken to the hospital for evaluation. And investigators were eventually able to find the Ford along uh, Route US-1, and after pulling it over, they found that the driver, 48-year-old Clara Smith, with the owner, Andrew Crosswell, in the passenger seat. Now, Crosswell claimed that he drove the car when it struck the bicyclist, but he hadn't stopped because he didn't think he'd hit someone. Deputies said they found something suspicious in the woman's purse, which was later confirmed to be methamphetamine. Deputies added they also found something concealed in the man's body. Quote, it's between the cheeks. He can be heard saying in video footage. He then began trying to, quote, jiggle it out while handcuffed. So you can picture the scene. They've handcuffed him. He says, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a thing in my butt. Let me try to shake it out for you. Quote, what, you don't want us to make us get it? That's that's the hard do not make us do. That's according to one of the cops that was there. Can you pick your butt with your hand? I want you to keep yes, this in mind. Yes, the answer is I can. You are handcuffed behind your back. You admit that there's something in your butt. The cops are like, cool, can you get it out? Because we really, really don't want to have to do so this. So that was the body cam. And after digging through his butt crack and with the help of deputies, the item was ultimately recovered by the investigators. But the question is, what was in his derriere? Was it more methamphetamine? Was it a meth pipe? Was it a gun? Or was it a pill bottle full of oxys? So more meth, the meth pipe, a gun, or a pill bottle full of oxys. I went to the cops are like, yeah, cool, dude, you please get that out for us. We're not doing this. Hmm. Ted, I'm going straight meth. I feel like if it was a gun, the cops would have gone in there and got it. They told him to just wiggle it out. Yeah, they were like, hey, man, can you... 357, you dropped it from the cheeks. Where was it again? Was it Florida or somewhere else? This was in... You know what? I actually do not know. I'm going to say it's just the meth pipe. Meth pipe. Yeah. Mike, what do you got? I think they've got some oxys in there. Oh, Ooh, pill bottle with oxys. Okay, what was in this guy's derriere? Was it meth, a meth pipe, a gun, or a pill bottle with oxys? We'll find out next. That was a tease. 99.9 KISW. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Our categories interior decorating on profilers. We have a driver that hit a bicyclist who was on a hand bike, uh, bicycle. He was, he'd, he'd been paralyzed. Yeah. But then again, he was hit by a car. So police found something in the driver of the car's butt cavity. That is correct. He had meth in the car. Question was, what did he have in the backside? Mm -hmm. Was it meth, a meth pipe, a gun, or a pill bottle with Oxycontin? Let us start with our very own Mike Hawk. Ah, you went with the mm -hmm. Oxys. No Oxys in the buttocks, Mike. Dee Ted Smith, you went with the old pipe. Meth pipe. Not no. a meth pipe. Miles, you just said more meth. Meth. Yeah, okay. More meth. How are you going to do it? Mm, 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 mm. be a pipe somewhere. Now for all TV news, all time, time for TV time with Ted. Yes, it is, Miles. Yes, it is. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box, the men's room presents TV time with Ted. Ah! 
All right, your choices today. You got Bill Maher. Bill Maher. Tomlinson. Colbert. The Jimmies. Fallon and Kimmel. Seth Myers. Damn. Yeah, it's Friday. Well, it was Friday. Weekend update. SNL. Or Ted Smith. Nine choices. Is it Ted or is Back it Back in accident. Late That's right there. The title life guys have teams and talents for writers. Help them come up with their monologues each and every night. It is up to you to determine, is this an actual late night joking from whom? Or could it be a The Ted Smith original? After its failed merger with JetBlue, uh, Spirit Airlines is facing financial problems and has over $1 billion in debt. So the next time you book a flight on Spirit, keep in mind the pilot hasn't been paid since last June. Let me guess. Kim. Uh, Bill Maher? Fallon. After its failed merger with JetBlue, Spirit Airlines is facing financial problems and has over a billion dollars in debt. So the next time you book a flight on Spirit, keep in mind that the pilot hasn't been paid since last June. <laughs> Retired West... <laughs> Westlaw. Retired wrestler Hawk Hogan jumped into action this week and saved a teen girl from a car accident. Hawk was in his trademark, a trademark bandana with his hair flowing out underneath and wearing a feather boa. Since the girl was a teenager, she still believes she was saved by somebody's really strong grandmother. <laughs> I would guess SNL. Seth Smith. Damn oh, it. good one. I'm just saying, if you don't, if he was dressed like Hulk Hogan and you're a teenager, you might not fathom who he is. Who is this weird person? A new report finds uh, that the average 50 year old in America is worth over one million dollars, while the average 30 year old is worth more than more dead than alive. <laughs> that has an L. Yeah, that's a That is Weekend Update. A new report finds that the average 50-year-old in America is worth over $1 million, while the average 30-year-old is worth more dead than alive. <laughs> a passenger on Spirit Airlines was arrested last week after he repeatedly asked female flight attendants to join the Mile High Club with him, even though Spirit's airplanes can only get above 300 feet. Can't get above 300 feet. That's <laughs> enough. Fallon? That's Weekend Update. A passenger on Spirit Airlines was arrested after he repeatedly asked female flight attendants to join the Mile High Club, even though Spirit's airplanes can't get above 300 feet. All right, so here's the deal with the Richard Simmons, Pauly Shore thing, okay? So Pauly Shore uh, has a short film about Richard Simmons that's at the Sundance Film Festival. All right. Because right? you heard all this stuff that, like, Richard Simmons wasn't really into it or this and that. So he had texted Paulie Shore about this and was like, yeah, cool. Okay, okay. But now they're talking about making a full-length bio, uh, a bio picture about him. And that's where he was like, I don't know that I really want to do this. Like, basically, he hasn't given, he hasn't like said, hey, Paulie, go ahead and go for it. He's yeah. given his approval. In a separate interview, Paulie said all this coming from a place of love. Quote, we don't want, we don't want to bug him. We want him to be left alone, and we don't want to bug him. We want to play homage to him and kiss his feet for all the, uh, and says he's done beautiful stuff. The, if you want to see Paulie do as Richard, that's the court jester. That's available on YouTube. You can check that out. Now, that's only like a 10-minute movie. Okay. And that's the thing, too, is that, like, I don't know. Like, for Richard Simmons, I kind of get his point because he's such a recluse person now. Yeah. And I also get Paulie Shore is just like, dude, we think you're awesome. We just want to show like everybody like, what you're really about and the mm -hmm. good side. But also, it's easy to tell people not to mess with Richard Simmons. But if this movie comes out and it be and it becomes a massive deal, you know, there's people that are going to be like, well, we got to talk to him. We got to talk to him. But it's he like he doesn't want to be. He positive. doesn't want to talk to. And like I said, I'm still not positive if it's just a sickness or age. Like he is very strict about like I I don't want to. He won't leave I don't his house. I am done. I am yeah. done. I've he done what I can do. He won't leave his house. Alone. Yeah, and he's 75. Like, I don't really blame him. I don't think he has to. But, yeah, I kind of forgot, too, until I started doing, you know, digging in a little deeper. Like, yeah, I mean, Richard Simmons' whole thing was just stay active, like sweating to the oldies. Yeah. And, you know, there's still stuff like that today. It's just, I don't know. I think it was different because Paulie, Sh or Jesus, because Richard Simmons, like you were saying earlier, Miles, is not like a shredded beefcake. No. And no. I'm sure he's gained weight. Like anybody else, right. yeah, as yeah. you get older, it's like it's one of those things that really affects you as a person. It's like Oprah. The more that Oprah comes out and looks skinny, and they mm. talk about her weight and all that stuff, like mm. if if Richard Simmons comes out and doesn't look like he's done anything in twenty years because he's been a recluse, well, you know, like right, and 
But and also, right. he just wants to be left alone. I mean, like, right. I think his thing would be like, hey, do a biopic. I respect that. I appreciate it. Can you wait for me to die? I think it's also tougher because he's it. a fitness person. Yeah. Right? Like, yes. with Oprah, you're right. I can't imagine. People are scrutinized her all the time for her well, weight going weight up or down. I mean, she's trying. But, I mean, she's, yeah, and she's lost weight again. But yeah. for Richard Simmons, I think it's even weirder because you got to come out and be like, like, when you look at some ex, uh, you know, actors and stuff, or, you know, it's like, well, and, and unfortunately, and I get it, it's much worse for the women, but some of the dudes, too, it's like, well, you still want that guy to be a ripped beefcake? He's like 65. Mm-hmm. Like, and he's done acting. I don't yeah. have to look good. I can just be the grandfather that I've been for seven freaking years or whatever it is, right? Yeah. Like, just cut him some slack. Mm-hmm. But so. we won't. We won't do it. And I, right. So, again, I don't know where I land on this one. Should they go ahead and make the movie? I guess because you're painting him in a good light. It just seems like if somebody wants to be left alone, maybe you just wait till he does pass away. Yeah, just leave him alone. That's, I don't think he's worried about how they're going to portray him. No one does anything negative to say about him, but just I don't want to be bothered by inevitably, if you're still alive and they do a biopic, everyone wants to interview you. What was your opinion? Correct. Is this accurate? Blah, blah, blah. He's like, Dude, I'm, I consciously also, uh, have walked away also, from this. Also, speculation about does he want his sexuality announced? All these different sure. things that, you know, he's never really brought up because it really didn't matter based on what he was doing. So who cares? But yeah. he cares. Yeah. You're right. Like, in this day and age, can't imagine anybody really would care or be shocked one way or the other. But you're right. If he cares, then he get, he doesn't have to tell anybody. All right. NFL playoffs. First of all, the games this weekend. I want to say the Ravens game was, like, the highest rated TV show, like, almost ever. Mm-hmm. The Ravens game was, yeah. Ravens game was massive. That Detroit game was the biggest show or biggest, highest rated show, I want to say, on whatever channel it was on for like this many years. Highest price ticket in playoff history. Like, if you think, like, I, it's always funny to me. I talked about this a little bit last week, too. People are like, Taylor Swift, like, not getting, you know, it's ruined. It's like, look, football has never been more popular than it is now. Okay. Can and I, if you are worried about Taylor Swift ruining football, you're concentrating yeah. on the wrong I'm thing. Not, I'm not worried about, uh, I'm glad that they have a great relationship. I'm glad. Good for them. Whatever. That, yeah, whatever. Here's my question. You go into Buffalo where the the fan base the week before shovels out the stadium. Correct. Just so people can get in there. So Buffalo, obviously, the, the fan base is the, the community. They all come together just, get it, right. just to make sure the game is played. The fact that Taylor Swift can get a suite in any NFL stadium to me, I understand. It's crazy, though, when you think about playoff football. So next weekend they play the Ravens in Baltimore. Do the Ravens give yes. Taylor Swift yes. and, you know, her future brother-in-law and anyone else that wants to come, do they give them a, like, how, like I understand how it happens. Taylor says, I'll play M&T Bank Stadium for three shows next year. And guess what, guys? A billion dollars will be added to your economy. It doesn't, I, but it doesn't even have to happen like that. Like, look, there, a lot of those suites are... They're always sold, but a, there's always a couple that are not just for VIPs. Okay. Right? It's, it's, Taylor Swift doesn't have to say anything. So is like, Kojak if Black going to be the one? <laughs> if you're the Buffalo Bills, you want Taylor Swift at your game, and it's yeah. like, we'll figure out a, a suite for him. I mean, like I saw, like, for instance, like, take Jake Browning, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, his wife looks great in a bodysuit, uh, was kind of <laughs> featured, and then he had to come out and be like, look, I didn't buy that. It's Burroughs suite that he had paid for for his family, but he didn't want to use it. So that also could be like one of the Bills players might have been like, hey, we got this suite. Like, it's not just Taylor Swift. Like, that happens for a lot of. Okay. If All you're right. that rich, you don't even have to be famous. You just got to be that rich. Like, be the, they'll the, find you a spot. The difference yeah. is we see her because you know who she is. And you're right, Ted. The eight other multimillionaires that have bought someone out of the suite, we don't see them because we don't know who they are. And yeah, frankly, security it. wise, you just can't have Taylor Swift sitting in the stands. No. No. Like, number no, one, no. It, people. Like, if she's sitting in your section, you would be annoyed at all the people lining up to take pic or trying to, like, get a picture yeah. with her or whatever. So it's like, for her, she's such a big deal and stuff. It's like, I get it. But there's plenty other times. Hell, sometimes the owner's suites. I mean, look, I know the one at Lumen is the biggest one of them all. Of course. It's like a double one. So, I mean, you could obviously just slide her into that one, too. Yeah, but it's on Ted. Nothing. Uh, Jason Kelsey, who plays for the Eagles, he was up there to watch his brother play. He was all over the all over the stadium. He was in the suite. He was having a good time. I saw him doing shots of liquor out of oh, a bowling yeah. ball before the game, and then he was shirtless, chugging beers, and he hopped out of the suite. Now, number one, I think it's awesome. He gra- let a little girl meet Taylor Swift. 
But the best video I've seen in a long time is Patrick's Mahomes. His father, Pat, is up there. Uh, Jason Kelsey's wife, who is very attractive, Mike, is also in there. There's and a- she is giving him, she, she's actually being decent. Like, he does this thing, but it's not like she's, like, reeling him in. Right, right. I mean, she might have said ah, a That was the best thing I saw today, is that Pat Mahomes, basically, she knows his shtick. But at one point, Pat Pat Mahomes, the father, says something to Jason Kelsey, basically, like, get your ass back in the <laughs> And he kind of was like, what? And it's like, but the, the story is, is that his wife sent him over and was like, go yell at him and tell him to get back. Okay. So, so all marriages are basically the same. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> no matter how much you get paid. Yeah, exactly. you are, right? You're, put your shirt on. Will you just eat a hot Can dog? you tell eat him? something. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's also just kind of funny. Like, they cut to the suite and there's Mahomes' wife and... Taylor Swift, and then in the background, he's just shirtless, chugging a beer. Yeah, just like yeah. I thought whatever. it was great. I cannot. I can never imagine taking my shirt off if I ever got invited to a suite. You invited me here, hey man. Off. But he can't. <laughs> I don't. Right, it tarps off. I mean, that's a that's a good call these days. Yeah, man, but also, I don't. I don't blame anybody in the suite for being like, get back in the suite, dude. Come on, come on. You're yeah, bring seriously, take some cheese. Like, like there's, there's little <laughs> hot dogs here. Please, just eat <laughs> something. please just eat something. Can you? <laughs> I like can you. <laughs> And, I mean, it's also kind of amazing what that says about him as a dude that, like, number one, he played for the Eagles. He mm-hmm. just retired. He's there to cheer on his brother who are taking on the Bills. And shout out to Bills Mafia. I still opening him with open arms. I mean, did, like, oh, did, come he, party. Just, did he officially retire? No. Has he not officially? No. no. I no. thought he had penned a note or something he, already. No. He hasn't said it. He said that the next day the emotion, emotions got to him, and he wasn't sure what he was going to do. But still, you're right. Like, the fact that he's, you know... The but, but it's so your brother. Warm. His family. Let the man His family. Think so about who it. cares? No, right. I I think it like, matters that it's him though. There's other players that have brothers in the NFL. If they showed up, I don't know that the other opposing right. fan bases would be as welcome. No, it, it, it's but everyone what, just kind of likes him because he's just a dude who's like, look, he's a dude. I get paid a lot of money. You know the position I play. You know the team. I, mm-hmm. I'm also married and have three daughters. Man, and right. if you have three daughters, I don't care what you think of me one way or another. I am you. It's different if you're John Harbaugh and you're down on the field hooking your brother when he wins a national championship. Sure. Because that's college and one's pro. But these guys play against each other. So that, that's the difference Correct. you're talking about. Yeah, like, right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He's literally there to cheer for the Chiefs playing the Bills. So it's like, that's a little different. Right, correct. <laughs> so, but yeah, the games are, all the games are pretty good. Uh, I was going to say, Baltimore obviously hosting Kansas City, and then you'll have the Niners. Let's go. Me and host- Mike have a one dollar bet on it. Yeah, we do. Do you? Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm giving. And look, and and I don't say this because I'm biased. And and if you're a Seahawks fan, you know this to be true. No matter how good your team is, you might talk smack, but deep down, everything they do wrong is what you pay attention to. The way the Ravens have played the last few weeks, I'm like, the only team that can beat them, I believe, is themselves. If they play their game, you cannot win. Okay. We're friends with Mike. Yeah. Right? Mike knows well, we're Ravens are. fans. Yeah. So he knows that, that we want the Ravens to win. Yeah. His wife is a Chiefs fan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He has he has no common denominator. That's the common denom- denominator. But yeah. the bottom line is, is that if the Chiefs win, Mike gets laid. <laughs> if 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 the That's Ravens, why you want so you the Chiefs to like, win. You can't really when you get down, sure, sit, babe, let's pop champagne. They won. Yeah, <laughs> sit, sit on the couch. Call me Travis. It's like, cool. Even if the Ravens won, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta feign hatred. You gotta be like, oh no, damn. oh no. Well, the Ravens oh, too. That, Bring it in, hug. That Bring defense in. traditionally is good. That defense is very good again this They're year. They're stupidly good this year. Yeah, but yeah. who's the linebacker they got? I mean, he, he's been Brooke playing. Smith. Yeah, he's been playing out of his mind. But then also, good too. you get an offensive tackle or a center on the edge, and you got Lamar Jackson behind him. It's like. Sorry, that's just an easy tut. Like, he's getting that six. That's why he's the MVP, and, get, and I don't yeah. say it to be a cocky thing. It's not that. Just the yeah. skill set he brings and the way he moves is absolutely ridiculous. And in this time of year, right. run the ball. Yeah. They like, got 229 you know I mean? yards, <laughs> and they had like two Ted, what good do you runs. D- Detroit goes into in San Francisco. Do they have a chance? Oh, yeah. I, Detroit has a very good chance. Sam Fran's a fraud. You can beat San Francisco, dude. They're a system I team. I have a you hard time seeing Detroit. It it's might be, be difficult for Detroit. for Detroit to do, but I'm telling you, San Fran is a by-the-book team. They can be dismantled and displayed. They're very good, but they cannot improvise. 
It did not look awesome that the Packers went in there and just, you know, the minus a couple a plays. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. it, for most of that game, they seem to be out playing. Yeah, San Fran's a joke. Come on. Thank you, Ted. We appreciate it. You're listening to the Men's Room. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. A guy parties for four straight days, not realizing that he had been previously shot in the head. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for one obedient dog, a Michigan man, it's likely that he is not dead or lucky. California man goes to Planet Fitness and really wants to get his pump on. Fortunately, uh, some fraternity brothers put a dead longhorn on a rival fraternity's front lawn. They probably won't be there anymore. And to the UK, where new ambulances are more like Mini Coopers. It's time for your headlines. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my cock. Now, it's time to hit the head. There you go. There it is. Our top story, we go to Texas, where the CEO of a major company is doing some damage control. And oh boy. The company recently came under public scrutiny after word got out that they had not only denied a woman's remote work request, but ultimately ended up firing her. Mm -hmm. Dive deeper into the story. The woman had submitted the request in order to be with her child, who was in the NICU due to being born after just 22 weeks. To make the optics Damn. nightmare look that much worse, the company is Kite Baby, a baby clothing company. <laughs> and the CEO has since made multiple apologies, reassuring the public that they pride themselves on being a family-oriented company. But no, you don't. Right. I mean, that's the image you sell, but that's not what you do, And man. we had talked about this off the air. She wasn't even trying to get time off or anything like that. No. Her baby's in the NICU. Yeah. She and she's like, can I just work from the hospital? No, no. you're fired. <laughs> but we're family oriented. Her right. kids in the NICU being born at 20 Jewish. BS. Exactly. Look, you can't do anything about who they are or how they operate, but you don't have to buy their crap. Correct. I just I don't know how you how you recover from that, honestly. I hope that people forget. Something else will come up in the next three days and we'll I be guess. mad about that, right? And not everybody's heard about the story, I guess, but that's that's an optics nightmare that just doesn't go away. Criminy. Yeah, it's a bad look. And I just I don't know what leads to her getting fired. You know what I mean? My like, kids like, in the NICU. I'm I'm telling you I want to work. Can I just not do it physically at that location? Exactly. No. And that's a firing offense that should just not show up. Like, all right, you know what? I'm then give me the time off. I don't know. It's you ridiculous. Know? Crime any man. In other news, strange story out of Southern California. Police got a call to a local planet fitness or reports of a man with a weapon. Story goes that for seemingly no reason, a man had gone into the gym, stripped naked, and proceeded to brandish a knife at gym nope. patrons. When police arrived, he was pointing a knife at a gym member in the locker room, and he was arrested without incident. Nobody was hurt, and the man now faced charges. Hmm. Why are I you naked? I do not care that you want to pull out a knife. That's stupid, and that's easy to avoid. Why do it naked? Why are you naked? Yes. <laughs> Like, you want to rob me? Fine. You'll probably do it well with a knife. Okay, cool. If you're just crazy and you got a knife, I get it. Why are you naked? Why naked? Why, why, you why naked? do you have to be naked? Why are you clothed? <laughs> like, don't flip it on me, naked guy. Oh, man. Like, right. like, no, 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 no. Now, I have a legit question. Why are you naked? Hey, why are you still wearing those bonds to your skin? Yeah, right? Like, be free, brother. <laughs> Down to Brazil where a New Year's Eve party turned into a hospital visit for one man. While out enjoying the festivities on New Year's Eve, the man felt a sharp pain accompanied, accompanied with the sound of an explosion in his head. So he's great. He reached up and felt what was indeed uh, uh, that he was indeed wounded and was bleeding, but deduced that it was an errant rock that had been thrown by someone else into the crowd and continued to have his good time. Which sounded like... Exactly. Four days of merriment later. This guy is on a bender. He's having a good old time. It's I love New it. Year. We're having fun, man. He finally sought medical attention after he was losing feeling and control of his arm and brought up the, uh, the, the hit that he took the head. A CT scan by doctors revealed that it was no rock that had hit him, but a bullet that had come down and struck him in the dome, oh, burying itself oh, in his head. Oh, yeah. A surgery later, and the man is back in, uh, living his best life, bewildering doctors all the while. They have no idea how, we, how he's alive. That is unbelievable. And here's you know what? That's more common than you, th than you would think. Here's my my guesstimation as to what happened. It's New Year's Eve. Somebody else is having a good old time. Oh, fired they in the air. They just fire around up in the air. They used to, and they used to warn down. people in Baltimore, please don't do that. Stop doing that. No kidding. When we live oh, there, just, every year. please do not fire your guns up in the air because they come down. Just pull a Yosemite Sam and come down. fire right yeah. Right around sky. Christmas, they do this week-long thing. And remember, on New Year's Eve, 
please don't fire your guns directly up in the air. The bullets do come down. Dear they God. weren't saying don't fire your guns. Well, shoot the dirt, shoot a fence. Sure. Just don't fire it straight because know every year, where your bullet is going to land. Oh yeah, every year, like four or five people, not as little were killed, but they were hit by the bullets. Sure. Mm-hmm. Coming and just down. Came back down. Yeah. Flying. So, Jesus Christ. Well, and like I feel like cop movies and stuff and cop shows back in the day that was always like, everyone hey, fired up. Yeah. yeah, just shoot a warning shot. Dude. So like I mean. And when I was a kid, I just figured it just kept going. And then it's like, no, that comes back down. Yes, it do. We should do a movie based on that, right? You fire two bullets in the air, and as they're giving her speech, you just see two people drop dead in the back. Seems like a million, oh, God, my bad. million to one shot, but it's happened. Oh, you bet. We head to the wonderful world of the internet where sometimes people, uh, the people that you call, call for help themselves. A video has gone viral on TikTok of a fire truck rolling into a neighborhood with an obviously icy street. It's unknown what the truck was there for, but as it tried to stop, the wheels of the truck locked up, causing it to spin out on the neighborhood street. And this thing was moving. And it eventually collided with a car before coming to a complete stop. Nobody was injured in the incident. You can probably catch the video at some point as you're as you're scrolling there. But just in case that these video stories, is wild. It is nuts, man. Yeah. I, I'm scared when I see that video. But just in case those stories left a bad taste in your mouth. Thankfully, there's good news. Man's best fr- friend indeed. Uh, local authorities in Michigan responded to a call about a man that had fallen through the ice. Luckily, he was still at his entry point and was able to communicate with rescue teams. But unfortunately, the ice was so thin that they weren't able to get the rescue disc out to the man without putting their own lives in danger. Just basically, You're going to die! Basically just a frisbee with a rope on it, right? Enter the man's dog, who had been out with him at the time that he fell through the ice. Rescue crews thought quickly and attached the disc to the dog's collar and the man was able to call the dog back over to him given the disc that ultimately <laughs> saved his life <laughs> and he was transported to the hospital Damn. and sustained no serious injury or damage I, if that were my dog i'd be dead yes yeah, i mean just like yeah. be, <laughs> he'd come and hang out with me while i was down there but as soon as it's like hey luke get over here he you look, look at me like, like you're drowning am i in trouble if i come <laughs> over there what's happening <laughs> World of sports, nothing local on tonight, but you do have some hockey underway on uh, NHL Network, basketball on NBA Network, and college hoops on ESPN channels and CS. I'm sports missing that Monday Night Football, Mike. I know you're on my I'm sorry, buddy. Yeah. As far as your weather, it's going to be mid 40s and rain all night long, but it'll dry up uh, into tomorrow for cloudy skies and a high of 52 degrees. And okay. that is it for your headlines. With that, Mike Hawk is out. Steve Miggs, Taryn Daly, join us tomorrow for Sit and Spin. The lovely Kevin Deers is up next. Yes, indeed, it's all true, but in the meantime, well, we be all about this bitch for 180 seconds or so. Throat. So until then, please do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful. The men's room has been taped before a live studio audience. Wardrobe and makeup provided by Mantastic Limited. This has been a presentation of the Men's Room Radio Network. Oh, man! A double flush production.